Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Modern Day Debate. Tonight, we're going to be debating, is the Quran scientific? And to start us off, we have Nadir. So, Nadir, the floor is yours for 10 minutes, and thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you, and uh, welcome, Mark. You know, there's um, very few people would be sitting in Mark's position, uh, especially among the atheists, because... A good number of them are already convinced with a lot of the Quran and science narrative. And uh, I open up my debates with this every time. And now I have living proof here. Mark Reed, who has accepted from the last debate, which I did, the Quran and Prophet Muhammad corrected six scientific errors in the Bible. Although he says it's not miraculous, but here's my point. That's why... You know, the people with a bigger uh, YouTube channel, they're not going to uh, challenge the Quran and science anymore because it has done catastrophic damage to their careers and they don't want their YouTube followers to know they don't have good answers. And that's exactly what we're going to see tonight, that this Quran is a scientific miracle. And so I don't want to just keep bragging and, and trash talking. I want to get into the actual arguments which atheists agree with and run away from. So one of the scientific miracles, which I will not talk about today, is because my opponent already agrees. See, I've been, I have been saying this all along. They already accept this, that, that Muhammad corrected six scientific errors in the Bible. How this relates to atheists is just a book. It doesn't matter if it's the book of Aristotle or it's the Bible. The question is, how could a man do that? He's going to offer some really ridiculous theories like, oh, well, you see, he was just doing research and things like that. All of that's going to be squashed tonight. So let's... Let's get. Uh, I'm just going to share my desktop and let's look at these verses which agree with modern science. I'm going to go ahead and share my little desktop over here. Yeah, it's ready second. for you when you're ready. Okay. Um, okay. Second. I have a little bit of pause your timer here. while okay. you bring that up. Okay. Yeah. Now I think I'm ready. Here we go. All right. Okay. So let's talk about. Um, you know. What's, what's, this is this article which I have up in front of you. This is from the Stanford University article. What can we say about dead sperm is that it determines whether a baby will be a boy or a girl. So surprise, surprise. It is actually the male sperm which determines the gender of the baby. Now, this wasn't known, uh, you know, hundreds of years ago. In fact, when you look through history, you look at what the ancient people said they said stuff like, for example, I'm just going to quote Aristotle over here. He believed the male is characterized by an abundance of superior element fire. That's how you get a male baby. Romans and hypocrites said, the male offsprings come from the right side of the male and the female from the left side. So this is, I'm just showing you what the people of past said about these things. Ibn Taymiyyah even said, well, there has no natural cause. And the list goes on. So now what's shocking is if Muhammad was just copying from ancient sources as what Mark would have us to believe, uh, he would copy or some something along the lines of these scientific errors, which we find over here. Let us go to chapter number 54, verse 45. It says over there, and it is he who created the two mates, the male and the female. So it's now talking about gender from a sperm drop when it is emitted. Did you see that? This is this is in complete harmony with what we are finding with modern sciences. So why didn't the Quran say, if, if the Quran was just, well, you know, just talking about all of humanity or something like that. Why wouldn't it say that? Why would the Quran specify the male and the female from the sperm drop? So that is in line with what we know today from modern science. Now, just because we find one or two verses agreeing with modern science, we shouldn't just jump to the conclusion that it is a scientific miracle. So what should you do? You should call the cops. What cops stands for, it stands for, well, it could be a coincidence. Maybe it's just a luck or some poetic expression. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's the, the O stands for it was observed. Maybe it was plagiarized. Maybe Muhammad himself was a scientist. So, uh, so what we are going to find over here is that COPS is not going to explain the scientific miracles or the scientifically correct statements in the Quran because for the next no, the next uh, reason which I'm going to show you is that they appear in triplets. That means three 
scientifically correct statements on the issue of marine biology. Let's take a look at that. So really, the scientific miracle is in the frequency of it. It's in the how many, I mean, if it's just like one or two, yeah, you can call the cops and you can explain it away. But when you see it happening again and again and again, you can't call the cops on that anymore because those explanations don't make any more sense. So let's take a look at marine biology. Three statements about marine biology. So the first one, let's, I'll first give you what science is. And again, please just hit pause on your YouTube channel just to get my references. So what science says is that uh, oceans have barriers in the, in, in the water. They're called the picnic line. And here's my reference from over here. This is from, uh, from uh, Rogers, Roger Williams University. It says over here, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is from NASA. It says, uh, picnic line act as a barrier in the water. Now let's just read chapter 55, verse 19 and 20. He merged the two seas, co co uh, converging them together. Between them is a barrier, word for word agreement with modern science. Again, we can call the cops. Maybe he was referring to something else. Maybe he was referring to islands. In fact, if you read the tafsir, it even, even said that oh, yeah, maybe he was referring to islands or something like that. There's a barrier. See? So is this a coincidence that we find this type of scientific agreement? So let's now, but wait a second. He's got more to say in oceans. Science also today tells us that there are invisible waves hidden beneath the surface of, of the ocean. So within the ocean itself, there are waves. These are known as internal waves. Let's read what the Quran has to say about that inside chapter 24, verse 40. In the vast ocean, in, notice it says in the vast ocean, covered by waves above which are waves. That is a word-for-word -word agreement with modern science. So now we've got two scientifically correct statements. So now we're going to get to the third one on marine biology. And that's talking about, and this is probably something everybody knows, at the bottom of the ocean, there's no light. Here we can see from the website Ocean Exploration, Exploration and Research, it says over here, and below 1,000 meters receiving no light from the surface. And of course, the Titanic, it's it's there, uh, you know, with it's complete darkness. The Quran says inside chapter 24, verse 40, and it's talking about the disbeliever and to whom Allah has not granted light for him, there is no light. So basically, it starts off by talking about those internal waves, or, or the likeness, and or uh, or the the um, the likeness of the disbeliever, darkness within fathomless seas, which is covered by waves, upon which are waves and clouds, and goes on. And says, so if one were to put out his hand therein, he could hardly see it. And then it continues to say, for a, for that who Allah has not granted light for him, there is no light. So it's comparing to the to the uh, deep ocean, there is no light clear comparison so here is what mark has to answer forget about whether the quran agrees with science or not everybody acknowledges that the question is how do you ramble about something which you know nothing about if muhammad was the author of the quran and he's ignorant of, of marine biology how is it that he utters three scientifically correct statements in triplets without uttering a scientific error if Mark is not able to present a reasonable explanation, then that's it. It's clearly proved it's a it's a scientific miracle. So we have the six corrections from the from uh, correcting the Bible. You see, he says, well, maybe you could have copied it or something. Well, okay, if, if Muhammad was doing research, then research happens through trial and error. Get some right, get some wrong. So the the you would not correct six scientific errors. You'd correct maybe like one or two or three get four wrong, something like that. Trial and error. But six corrections and not a single error proves it to be, uh, that this is not some kind of research. Or co If you're copying, then you will copy the wrong, scientifically incorrect statements from those books into the Quran. So if you are doing scientific research on oceanography, and by the way, all of those scientific facts which I pointed out was discovered with technology, with advanced technology. So if people think, oh, I'll just go to the ocean, I'll just figure out how this stuff works. Uh-uh. Okay. It was all discovered by using modern latest techniques of, uh, you know, technological advances. 30 seconds. If you're, if you're doing this type of 
research, you're going to find scientific errors pertaining to C's. So if he is not able to show us scientific errors pertaining to C's, then his theory of borrowing or research will fail. So I believe that's my time. All right. Well, thank you so much. That is your time. Uh, let's end the screen share. And then we're going to put it over to Mark for his opening there. And I will set the time, 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 time. All right, before I get us demonetized, I will let everybody know before you start there, Mark. Uh, welcome to Modern okay. Day Debate. If you haven't been here before, uh, hit the like button, hit the sub. We really appreciate it. We are a neutral debate platform, hosting debates on science, politics, and religion. You name it, you're going to find it here. And we hope you all feel welcome. And let's kick it over to Mark's intro. So, Mark, 10 minutes on the floor. Thank you so much, Ryan, and thanks uh, to you, Nadir, for participating in this debate. Uh, the topic is, is the Quran scientific, uh, scientifically accurate? Sorry, and I'll be taking the negative position. Um, the reason why I... Hang on a second. I, oh, there goes my screen. Okay. Um, the reason why I took this has been, Nadir's been claiming that atheists won't face him. So I'm, I'm sorry, Nadir, you literally asked for it. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So first thing we have to do is discuss what we mean by scientifically accurate. I think people will generally have a good idea what that means, but we're, bear with me because I want to really clarify and pin down exactly what that means. Um, so first off, we have to um, think about what, what does scientific entail? Um, sorry, I'm just having a little problem with my slides. I do apologize. Just one second. Uh, there we go. Okay. Um, so the definition of scientific basically is reliant on what is science as scientific relates or pertains to the implementation of science. Here are a few definitions, and I know definitions are not prescriptive, but it gives us an idea of what scientific means related to science. So obviously, we have to ask, what is science? Um, science or methodological naturalism is a process of investigation of the natural world. There are multiple scientific methods, but they all follow a basic pattern of observation, research, hypothesis, testing, analysis, and reporting. Um, the Quran does not follow this procedure and does not falsify, test, or have any kind of scientific reporting mechanism in which to justify their beliefs as scientific or show any methodology that would fit this criteria. What's worse is that many of the claims in the Quran rely on dogma, which is completely antithetical to the scientific methodologies. Um, and this is basically a diagram um, how the scientific process does work. Um, so to be fair, there is something called in science called demarcation, which is a gray area between what is science and what is not science. It, it's difficult to classify what falls into science and what falls into pseudoscience. Um, Karl Popper writes extensively on falsifiability, which he considered to be a hallmark of science. However, it may be more nuanced than this. Falsifiability could be said to be an indication of scientific criterion being met. However, there are some classical scientific endeavours that may not meet these criteria, like ancient Chinese astrology, for instance, who made incredibly detailed records of star movements that we draw on this to this day. However, Sean Rafferty made a particularly astute observation that non-scientific statements were you by selected evidences removed from context. And I want to read this out because I think it will have particular significance in this debate, especially what Nadir says. Even for those subfields where there is a significant element of interpretation, those interpretations are still based on and constrained by physical evidence. And interpretations are always provisional, pending possible refutation by contradictory evidence. Pseudoscience, by comparison, is scornful of evidence. The pseudoscientist reaches a preferred conclusion in advance, then selects evidence, often removed from any relevant context, to lend supposed support for their conclusions. Often the preconceived conclusion is one that justifies some closely held identity or ideology. Contradictory evidence is waved away or ignored, and as a last resort, one can always claim conspiracy to keep pseudoscientific ideas suppressed. And I think we'll see a lot of that in this debate. So this is Theories of Aether and Electricity. It's a book from 1910. There's some things in it which are still pertinent to science today, like galvanism and, and perhaps some conduction in solutions of gases. Um, the, the problem is that it's no longer a scientifically accurate book. It's still a scientific book because it still meets the falsification criteria that Popper outlined. But it's no longer scientifically accurate because it contains information that does not align with the modern scientific understanding of the field. So what does it, let, let's wrap it up. What, what does it mean to be scientifically accurate? In order for us to call a book scientifically accurate, it does have to be in line with modern scientific principles. Secondly, the information gathered must have been acquired scientifically, or at least the knowledge 
uh, if we acknowledge the problem of demarcation through empirical study and testing. For instance, I could guess that Nadir owns a cat. I could be 100% accurate about that statement, but the knowledge would not be gathered scientifically and therefore could not be said to be scientifically accurate. Even if I observed there was something like cat hair on Nadir's shoulder, I, this would not be scientifically gathered as I have no falsification criteria for the hair. I cannot test the validity. Um, and I could be 100% correct, Nadir could own a cat but it's still not scientifically accurate. If I went over to where Nadia lives and tested the hair or performed a survey to see whether a cat went in and out, now that may be scientifically accurate. The book on the screen is an example of a scientifically accurate text textbook. However, it's important to realize that it's a fifth edition of the book, which is a hallmark of a scientifically accurate books. They update when the scientific understanding is developed. So my first question to Nadir is, when will the Quran will be updated to exclude the monumental errors in the text? And don't worry, I will go through some of them later. Um, so the question comes up, why do Muslims like Quran, Nadir want the Quran to be a science book? Science books are incredible under scrutiny to be both accurate and valid in substance and methodology, which obviously the proponents of the Quran do not wish to be under. It has to be updated to the current scientific understanding, which Muslims do not want to do. The reason is because they want to steal credibility for the religion of Islam from the bowl of science, trying to associate themselves with the scientific methods. This is a flawed effort and will only serve to undermine the credibility of their own book. Um, even if the Quran can give some information is accurate, we have to address the elephant in the room, the errors. And boy, are there errors. Um, so many errors. First, the formation of the earth. It was not six, six days. The current scientific understanding is the earth took at least three million years to form, not two days as the Quran claims. This is so wildly inaccurate. I, I cannot even express how wrong it is. Um, humans created from clay. There is no scientific theory that concludes humans were made from dust, clay, or any other mineral substance whatsoever. Humans developed according to, according to science, along with every other living creature according to the process of evolution. The idea that we are somehow pottery is complete nonsense, and no scientifically accurate textbook would ever have this in. So gins, let's talk about gins. Claims of supernatural angel-like demons that torment humans or were converted by Muhammad at some point. I'm almost embarrassed to point out that supernatural entities formed of fire that try to eavesdrop on the secrets of heaven to be driven away by meteorites is unscientific. I mean, do I really have to say this? Is this what we are claiming to be a scientifically accurate book? This is this is fantasy. Um, and so speaking of jinns, at least a couple of places, the Quran speaks to shooting stars as being missiles to drive out devils. Firstly, shooting stars are not actual stars, like the Quran 67.5 says they are. They are meteorites. And secondly, what falsibility, uh, falsifiability criterion does Nadir have for meteorites driving away supernatural devils? Perhaps he could walk us through how that would be scientifically falsified and his scientific accuracy on that one. Um, so a few here. The, the Quran talks about semen being produced between the backbone of the ribs. Any medical student that describes semen as coming between the backbone and the ribs would receive an instant fail on their uh, uh, anatomy exam. Um, this is the kind of inaccurate information that a biology and anatomy textbook would never have in it. The claim in Quran 36.36, it says that everything is, has pairs and ignores pathogenesis. Uh, that's when a asexual organism can produce an egg and fertilize it itself. They, they are basically a virgin birth. Um, it ignores bacteria splitting. It ignores intersex and hermaphrodite sexual designations. This is a scientifically inaccurate statement about sexuality that we no now know to be 100% untrue. The third one must be my favorite. Hearts to reason was the hallmark of cardiocentrism, where people believed that the source of cognition was was and reason thinking was the heart. Now we know that getting a heart transplant, it won't actually change your mind. And of course, everyone's favorite, the moon splitting in two. Uh, not only does it say the moon has split in two, it provides no kind of methodology, know this and why any kind of scientific information. Um, I, I also want to add that this verse talks of miracles and magic, both of which do not fall into scientific endeavors as science is concerned with natural phenomenon. Um, so in conclusion, the, the Quran is not scientific. It does not follow, nor has any fo never followed any kind of naturalistic empirical methodology and is not accurate. 
So it fails on both counts. It gets major scientific facts wrong. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much for your time and I'll pass it back to Ryan. All right, excellent. Thank you so much, Mark, for your opening yeah. statement. We are going to kick it into two minute back and forths, everybody. Uh, so I'll just let you know, both of these speakers, if you like what you're hearing, they're gonna be linked in our description along with the podcast. So if you're watching on podcast, you'll see both of our speakers linked there. You can find more of them there if you like it. Um, and if you you know want to ask them a question, if you're thinking, oh, I really want to grill them on this, get that in as a super chat, and they'll get read as priority. Or tag me, Ryan the Mod, uh, in the live chat, and uh, I'll make my I'll make a little list. If we get time, we'll read them out. So, uh, two minutes on the floor, Nadir, and uh, it's all yours. Yeah, as I have already mentioned to you in the beginning, he will have no response for the scientifically accurate statements in the Quran. Rather, he heavily relied on quibbling about what scientific means, and we can get to that. But if what I have presented about the agreement to science is not scientific according to them, then how are the alleged scientific errors scientific to Mark's definition? So he's contradicting himself over there. But So let's not quibble about what scientific means here, Mark. So here's how I'm going to finish, Mark. The Quran is in complete harmony with modern science. He gave this shotgun blast of that Quran is an error over here. Quran is an error over here. I will give you, remember I told you, I'm going to give you the, the exact argument which the atheists have all ran away from. And here is the argument. I'm just going to share my desktop right over here. Um, look, when you show that there's an alleged scientific error in the Quran, all you got to do, here's a scientific fact. I'm sorry, what people of, of the past have said about, inaccurately have said about science, show the verse, and then give us an article. Here's the article which contradicts that. Let, let's see how this works. And I will challenge you, give us all tonight this article or scientific fact which contradicts the Quran, and you will not be able to do so. So let me just show you what I mean by that. Let's look at the screen. The Roman physician Galen said, blood formed in the liver. Science. Red blood cells start as immature cells in the bone 15 marrow. 15 seconds. Direct contradiction. So this is my challenge for you. Rather than shotgun blasting us with all error here, error here, error here, do exactly what I have just shown you, and you will never be able to do that. So show us a, a verse of the Quran and where science contradicts it. And, and I, will, I will answer each one one by one. Go ahead. All right, let's end the screen share. And thank you so much, Nadir. And over to you, Mark. Two minutes. Oh, I, I didn't shock on blast. I just brought up my favorite errors. That's all. I mean, I could go on for hours with the errors, scientific errors in the Bible, hours and hours. So that's not a shotgun blast. You brought up your examples. I brought up mine. I don't get why mine's a shotgun blast and yours isn't. Okay, so let's let's get at it. Um, so I can point out an error that you made in the ones that you read out as proof. You said that Allah has not granted light. You can hardly see it at the bottom of the ocean. No, you can't hardly see it. You can't see anything at all. Light does not reach down there, Nadir. It is inaccurate. Um, it may be scientific. We don't know what Muhammad did to get the information that he got because he hasn't documented any kind of methodology for reaching his conclusions. And that is what makes it unscientific. Um, you didn't listen to my introduction, unfortunately, because I also said that things can be right and, and, and not scientific. Things can be scientific and not right. I pointed out a book that was scientific, but it was not right on the eighth day. It was incorrect and is not scientifically accurate. So you have to argue that things are both correct and scientifically acquired. Those two criteria, and I outline that directly. Now, you're sort of pointing out that people 400 to 500 years before Muhammad's time made an error. That's basically what the nub of your argument is. So he's had 400 to 500 years of knowledge accumulated by humankind in order to correct the error. I don't see how that suddenly becomes scientifically relevant. It, it, he hasn't followed any kind of scientific doctrine. Even if he got it right, there's still monumental errors in the Quran. And I'd like to, for you to address some of them. Um, barriers in the sea, you can sort of see that. And plus, if you're swimming down in the ocean, you can see it getting darker. It doesn't take a great stretch to go, hey, when you go further, it gets darker still. And he even got it seconds. wrong by saying you can hardly see the light. You you can't see the light. Like, so there's, there's an error. 
Um, and I love that you brought up Aristotle because Aristotle wasn't scientifically accurate either. So that's actually pretty hilarious, Nadir. That's time. Over to you, Nadir. Okay. Okay. So as you can see, Mark is struggling here. And now we see that he's going down like the Titanic and like all the other atheists. They cannot take a verse of the Quran, show an article, and show how the two contradict. Now, he's bringing up all these issues, what's scientific, what's not barriers like, one issue at a time. I'm an old man. <laughs> but what I am trying to show everybody, he's panicking tonight. He's panicking. He knows that there's clear agreements with modern science. He knows he has no article or reference to share with you tonight to show a contradiction between the Quran and science. Like Now, I, sh I literally took the Quran verse juxtaposed it with an article from Modern Science, and I did it repeatedly over and over again. Why can't you do that with the Quran? That's the question tonight. Now, if I don't answer some of the questions about days, sperm in the back, but all these things, they've all been debunked, but please keep in mind that <laughs> I can only do one at a time here. So let's do the thing about days, then we'll get to the barriers and things like that. But if I don't answer all of his points here, don't be impressed. He's just shotgun blasting points at everybody, hoping that I, I, I won't get an opportunity to address that. So let's let's uh, let's do the days thing. So my question here is, how many wacky, quacky interpretations did you count? Have you ever done that? Just count how many wacky, quacky interpretations? I counted two. It is a misrepresentation of science and it is a misrepresentation of, of the Quran. Double barrel interpretation spin. The Quran makes it very clear, I'm going to share my desktop over here, that the that the day has an arbitrary amount of time. Like, for example, you could just Google it from the scholar's seconds. article. Sometimes the day is a thousand years, sometimes 50,000 years in the Quran in chapter 70, verse 4. So he misrepresented the Quran by, by restricting it to a 24 hour period. He misrepresented science because the creation of the universe and Earth was a miracle, and science is cool with miracles. There we go. And I'm sorry I have to restrict you guys, but these are the rules we uh, agreed to follow. So uh, two minutes, and uh, we'll end the screen share there for now. Uh, over to you, Mark. I, I love that you brought up miracles, Nadir, because miracles are not scientifically accurate. They're not involved in science at all. So any book that has miracles in is not a scientific book because it does. miracles are supernatural. They're not part of the natural world. And as methodological naturalism, science excludes them. That's not what science is for. But if you'd like me to, I mean, I didn't realize I would have to argue that, you know, this kind of thing. Um, how about uh, let's focus in on Quran 37, 6 to 10, I believe it is. Um, and uh, the uh, NASA saying, what are meteorites? Meteorites are a solid piece of debris from an object such as comet, asteroid, or meteorite that originates in outer space and survives its passage through the atmosphere to reach the surface of a planet or the moon. Um, the Quran basically says that sh um, shooting stars, i.e. what we know to be meteorites, are lamps thrown at devils who are trying to pierce the heavens and listen in on heaven. Um, so could you explain why that's not a contradiction? And and I, I forgot to say this in the last thing. I, I don't think you know what word for word means, Nadia, because when you say, oh, it says that word for word, it doesn't say it word for word. You're basically interpreting it and saying, oh, it's exactly the same when it's not exactly the same. So when you say word for word, it is verbatim. It is exactly the words that have been Spot, put in the Quran as on the scientific documents. And that is clearly untrue. So maybe learn what word for word or verbatim means. All right. We'll pass the floor over to you there, Nadir. Two minutes. Okay. So let's talk one issue at a time here, Mark. Okay. So it looks like Mark will fail the challenge tonight. I think that's pretty clear for everybody that he will not be able to take an article from science juxtapose it with a verse of the Quran and show a contradiction between the two. That's just not going to happen tonight. And, and I, I think we can, we can, uh, we will give him more opportunity to do so. Um, but then he tried to talk, he, he tried to give his own definition or his own understanding of the scientific position on miracles. But like I said, this is a double barrel interpretation spin. And one thing I do want to uh, tell everybody tonight, the, the main argument about this here is 
the atheists and the people who challenge the Quran, they will not be able to bring facts. Only wacky, quacky interpretations. He double-barreled interpretations, not just on the Quran, but on science. He spun it in a way, both of them simultaneously, to create a contradiction. So let's go to, uh, let's go to, I'm going to share my desktop over here real quick. And let's take a look. He was not able to answer. Oh, we, oh, okay. That might. What? What is that? I'm sorry. I'm not no, I'm looking. No, you're oh, set up. Don't I, worry. I, okay. Okay. Let me let me share my screen over here. You cannot start the screen share while the other participants are sharing. Oh, sorry. That's me. That's me. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Sorry, so we'll get to meteors in just a second, Mark. Please. Let's yeah. finish one issue at a time. Here, so let me go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Let me go ahead. Here's how science works. From the article, how the, the the scientific how the scientific method works from the, from how stuff works. The, uh, this place certain topics beyond the reach of scientific method. It's beyond the reach. So if something is a miracle, we really don't apply the scientific method to it. Only fools do that. They might do that at the atheist academy of pseudoscientific excellence, but that's not how science works. Science cannot prove nor refute the existence of God or any supernatural 15 entity. Seconds. So he misrepresented science and he has also misrepresented the Quran. So it looks like you have no defense on the number of days. You said days was only 24 hours in the Quran. Obviously, that's not true. And you misrepresented science. Once you cannot defend the day issue, let's get to meteors and I'll deal with you on that. All right, let's end the screen share for now and we'll kick it back over to you there mark okay don't mind well me. we, we were only there. doing one sorry we were just doing one topic at a time um we, we were talking about meteorites and you sort of avoided it um i'll talk about the day thing um so remember i said earlier that you'll notice pseudoscience will take things out of context and and breathe interpretation into them so you know it is interpreted that the two days means x amount of time but that's not a surface reading of the text which does have to happen in a scientifically accurate book. Nadia says, I can't put two articles side by side. Um, here is where it says we have dawned with an adornment of stars, their protection against every rebellious devil. I mean, so unscientific, it's ridiculous. I, I wouldn't think I was going to be arguing that devils are unscientific today, but here we are. I don't know what happened. Um, repelled and for them is a constant punishment, except one that snatches some words by theft is pursued by a burning flame piercing in brightness. This is talking about shooting stars. Um, and their, their protection against devils. And here is meteorites in NASA. I don't know why I have to do this, but apparently we're going to be arguing if devils are actually uh, repelled by meteorites or something. Now, notice in the um, thing when he brought it up, it says that God is outside the purview of science. I never said that science disproves to God. I said that science doesn't deal with a God. And therefore, you cannot have a scientific book that talks about a God because it falls outside and miracles fall outside of science. So Nadir apparently agrees with me. Um, he just says that, hey, because it falls outside the realm of science, it automatically has to be considered scientific. I don't know why that would be the case. It is not scientific in the slightest. And so he has, in fact, gone ahead and proved that a book of miracles and God and all of these supernatural things is, in fact, unscientific because science doesn't deal with those kind of things. That's it. I, I'll pass back over. You got it. Yeah. What are you going to do? A book. Yeah, a, a book which uh, talks about gods, devils, heaven and hell. This is all, according to him, unscientific. Look, I have already conceded tonight that the Quran is in contradiction with atheist pseudoscientific quackology. I'm admitting that tonight. But from a scientific point of view, it's perfectly fine if you want to believe in gods, goddesses, heaven or hell. They don't take a stand on that, okay? So... We have to make the distinction between what is atheist quackology and what is modern science. They they have a and don't confuse the two. So okay, you weren't able to defend the uh, you know you were pointed out that the day could be fifty thousand years, it could be one thousand years, it could be a twenty four hour period in the Quran. He wasn't able to refute that. And miracles and science and, and talking about gods and goddesses, whatever, from a scientific point of view, it's there's they're not going to challenge that. That's fine. So there's no, uh, and notice he wasn't able to show any article presenting what science really believes on miracles. I have already presented mine. So now let's get to meteors. This is the fun part. Remember, the scientific miracle what of the Quran, where the, where the, um, what you are going to find amazing tonight is that every refutation I'm presenting is backed by fact. Look at, it is the people who challenge the Quran scientifically 
are the ones who spin their wacky quacky interpretation. So let's look, let's post up and, and, and you uh, share your desktop, Mark, and let's look at what you got over there, if you could, please, because we're going to have a good uh, laugh at you real quick here. Sure, but, sure. Now, unfortunately, I mean, I I, I'm going to have this. to not talk more about the scientific miracles and the scientific agreement. I'm just <laughs> talking about alleged scientific errors. So I'm sorry, I'm going to have to kind of uh, bypass that debate. So look what it says over here. Look at the look at the quackology going on here. The streak which you see in the sky, that those are meteors burning in the atmosphere. Where do you show anything on the right-hand side that contradicts that mark? Can, and in fact, the verse says nothing about stars. The actual word there is lamps. So there's one wacky quacky interpretation, right? That he's now reinterpreting the Quran. Why can't you just let the Quran speak for itself without reinterpreting it? Because stars are not even mentioned in the text. You see, so my point here is that the, now he's seen yet a second time where these alleged scientific errors are based upon interpretation. You cannot take a text of the Quran, compare it with modern science and show a contradiction. This is an utter fail, which you have here. So now I think I got a couple of more seconds here. Uh, it looks like you will not be able. It's very difficult to debate scientific miracles of all the agreement there. with science and alleged scientific errors. So I'm going to have to abort the first debate. Let's just focus on these alleged scientific errors here. But look how he's misrepresenting the text. So here's my question for you, Mark. Where does it say anything about stars in the text of the Quran? And where does it show that in the heaven, that streak that we see, that they're talking about that? Can you please explain that to us, Mark? All right, there was a little extra time. So Mark, I'll give you two and a half. Thank you. Um, it, it's it's really odd that you're sort of talking about scientific quackology and all of this kind of stuff. I mean, I, I understand that that's your rhetoric, but, you know, I've brought up scholars like Karl Popper, who's been very, very influential in the philosophy of science. I've brought up other people who have sort of talked about pseudoscience and the places that they go to when uh, they go to not dealing with empirical evidence and instead go for interpretation and excusing away what it says. I mean, I, I love, I absolutely love that you say, hey, it's not stars in the sky, it's lamps in the sky. That's great. That's fantastic, Nadir. Could you give me a scientific paper saying that there's lamps in the sky? Or is that sort of just scientifically accurate as well? Because I don't think that science has determined there to be lamps in the sky. And I don't think that's scientifically accurate at all. I I, I almost missed that. But you said, oh, well, I'll abort the first debate. Are, are you basically conceding and, and saying, hey, the first this debate's off? Like, what are you saying, Nadir? Um, it's very, very strange that you're saying, well, abort the first debate and go to what I really want to argue. You're basically conceding the entire debate saying, hey, I don't want to talk about this anymore. Well, I'm sorry, that's the title of the debate. So if you want to debate, we'll be talking about the scientific accuracy of the text, which the Quran is scientifically inaccurate, as I've pointed out many, many times. This is just one example, and I can go through some others if you'd like. That's no problem whatsoever. And how they disagree with scientific articles about that thing. Um, so, uh, and maybe you should give us your definition of science. If you're saying that I'm using an incorrect one about methodological naturalism, maybe you should give your definition of science and what is scientific. Uh, I can't hear him. Go ahead, Nadir. Nadir. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, he passed the clock over. Oh, so uh, yeah, Mark. <laughs> Mark, can you uh, can you can you post what you just had there? Let's do one. The reason why I'm not talking about the scientific miracles in the Quran is because I'm bogged down by addressing your other claims. I'd love to talk about it, but I can't do both at the same time. So let's first finish these alleged errors. Can you please post what you just uh, what you just had on the screen? Because I want to read it to you. OK, uh, you share mind. your desktop again, Mark. Let's see if the Quran is talking about the streak in the sky and is saying that's a star. Let's let's see if it really the Quran really says that. Okay. I mean, I, I think we're like Mark, getting me to share, share can my you, can screen you, can again you share and again. Screen, is please? Kind of um really obnoxious. Um, it has been okay. a lot of screen we shares. Uh, we'll, okay, we're okay, we're okay. Try look to what is it? From Indeed. Here. Right. Okay. Let's look at the verse he's he's highlighting here. Let's see if it's talking about the streak in the sky that sometimes we see at night. It said, "Indeed, we have we have adorned the nearest heavens." I'm sorry. Indeed. I'm sorry, let me read this again. Uh, indeed, we have adorned the nearest heaven with an adornment of stars. Okay, and actually the word there is kawakib. It could mean star, planet, but let's just go with stars. Okay, no problem, no problem. Where does it say I that the streak in the sky, that is referring to the streak in the sky that everybody looks at? You know, some, oh, not everybody, we, 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 can, we can see that. Obviously, this is a big fail. 
the Quran is not talking about the streak in the sky, which we are looking in inside uh, at nighttime. So uh, I see no contradiction between the, the scientific article you posted and the Quran. They are talking about two different things. So, okay, let me quickly talk about the scientific miracles. So going back to the issue about the barriers, those are three scientifically correct statements, barriers in the sea. He says, well, you could just observe it. No, that's invisible. Uh, it, the text of the Quran did say that the likeness of the disbeliever is like for a person who has no light referring in the sea. That's scientifically time. correct again. And that's a triplet of scientifically correct statement without error, which Mark was not able to explain. All right, let's try to make that the last screen share for this evening. And we'll try to keep your lovely faces on screen uh we got quite a bit of debate to go uh so if you haven't already hit the like button uh do so and we'll uh once again be doing a q a at the end of all this so uh get your questions in and uh let's keep it rolling over to you mark yeah so this is this is this is actually hilarious because there were stars before and when that's inconvenient it goes to lamps now it's back to stars again so um you know keep in mind what i said about how pseudoscience works by inserting any interpretation that you want in there and nadir's gone from one to the other trying to make something work in there and it says that the assembly of angels are pelted by by every side from these stars it's clearly talking about meteorites there is another passage in the quran which references um that that shooting stars are meteor uh, um uh, uh, lamps thrown by Allah to throw away the devils. I can find that one too. That's not a problem. Um, so um, he's gone back to uh, barriers in the sea. Now, what does that actually mean? Does it mean that there's a barrier between the salt water and fresh water, as some Muslims say? Is it a barrier underneath the, the water? We don't know. We don't know because it's not clear. It's unscientifically unclear. It doesn't explain what the barriers are. It doesn't explain what methodology was used to find this information. Um, all it says is there's barriers in the sea in quite a poetic way. That That's great. But we don't, it doesn't actually say what that barrier is, where it exists, and, and what it com comprises of. It has no information whatsoever to say on it. So the idea that that is correct, it has to be interpretation to make it correct. And I've heard multiple different interpretations address multiple different scientific facts before. What this is, is a post hoc rationalization. It's finding a scientific um, fact, going back to the Quran and saying, hey, I can make this work. I can fit this into the scientific facts. Um, scientific miracles has absolutely no meaning. It's an oxymoron because as as Nadir pointed out in his screen share, the, the, the science does not deal with gods and miracles. So for him to say a scientific miracle is just a nonsense proposition. It's an oxymoron. It's a contradiction in terms already because science doesn't deal with miracles. He also avoided, just quickly, he also avoided, he didn't give a definition of science. So, Nadir, I'm going to hold you to this. What is your definition of science? Please, do give a definition because mm -hmm. you say mine's wrong. Over to you. Okay, uh, to the moderator, I, I think sure. uh, we, we have a lot to share on our on our desktops. Can, can we continue sharing our screens? Is that okay? Uh, if we could have just like a, a period, uh, maybe I would just ask, like a period where we just keep ourselves on screen, like maybe maybe another 10 minutes of just like back and forth, uh, just so that our audience, like I said, gets uh, gets the image. Uh, on the podcast, it's not going to matter regardless. So, uh, okay. uh, yeah. It, so, okay. okay so, <laughs> sorry. yeah, I'll just start my two minutes. So it looks like uh, that was an epic fail from Mark. I asked you to show an article, which you know, uh, contradicts modern science. I mean, you keep rambling, a lamp's in the sky, and it's like this, and it's like that. Look, look, you need to show a verse of the Quran, show an article uh, from modern science, like how I did, okay, and show a contradiction between the two. You were not, a, you were not able to do so. That was an epic fail we just saw tonight of you trying to, you have misread the Quran the second time. First, you thought that the Quran was only talking about 24-hour period of day, then you started talking, then you mis you misrepresented that. Then you misrepresented the Quran to, where it talks about that phenomenon we see in the sky about the, the streak which we see, which are meteors burning in our atmosphere. You're like, the Quran's talking about this. See the lamp verse? Oh, yeah, see, this is, it's all, all talking. No, it's not. <laughs> okay, so I want to give you a third opportunity to find an article from science, match it up with the Quran, and show contradiction between the two. Now, I know you rattle off all these alleged scientific errors, but come on, guys, I'm an old man. I can deal with one issue at a time. Now, I want to get to the issue on barriers. You are right. I mean, the Quran simply has a statement which agrees with modern science 
but it could be reinterpreted to mean something else like islands or something like that. Yeah, definitely. All you're doing, you're just calling the cops. Okay. So the que the issue here, which I want to point out to you, look, the verse can have two, two interpretations. You can say it could refer to islands, let's just say, or it could refer to the picnic line, if we are be which is that barrier in the sea, which science is talking about. It could be either one. And the scientific miracle is that you, you, you just can't make that conclusion based on that one fact. But when you see a consistency of it, it's about recognizing a pattern that one of the valid interpretations of the verse does agree with modern science. And you can see that pattern in the Quran seconds. repeatedly over and over again. So, yeah, certainly you are right. You can reinterpret it to mean something else. But where you are wrong and where you are going to be defeated tonight is by denying that there's a clear pattern of this type of behavior in the Quran. That's where time. one of the interpretations does match with science. Thank you so much. All right. Over to you, Mark. Two minutes. Okay. Well, I mean, Nadia's asked me to share things again. I don't. I don't think this is a hundred percent necessary. I think it's just sort of, you know, um, um, filibustering and, and rhetoric on Nadia's part. But I can show you where the the, um, the uh, um, Quran says that man was created from pottery, and I'll show you thousands of articles on evolution, clearly showing it to be absolute nonsense. Um, so, I mean, I can do that, but I, I think I think we can all agree, and I think you know because we don't want to just can continually share screens um that man created like that of pottery and from clay is not like i can show you papers scientific papers that say that that is not true um you know you're sort of expecting me to show you hey the quran is wrong in a scientific paper and like i said miracles and stuff is not in the quran now we're not um sort of discussing whether something's accurate we're discussing whether something's scientifically accurate and that's important because as i pointed out in my opening and i think you completely ignored i could say hey um nadia um trims his beard right i i could say that because i look at you and i see a neat beard i could make that that sort of um, extrapolation and i would say i, I could be a hundred percent correct about that it doesn't make it scientifically accurate it doesn't um i have not performed science as in the methodological naturalism in order to analyze whether that event actually occurs you might just naturally have a very neat beard you might not you know there could be a, a number of ways i could be wrong but even if i am right it doesn't make it scientifically accurate because there is no methodology that falls under the scientific purview. And again, you haven't given your definition of science. Give your definition of seconds. science. Stop dodging. Mm -hmm. Over to you, Nadir. Okay, so we are going to see there's going to be another epic fail tonight of Mark trying to find a scientific article and trying to show a contradiction between that and the Quran. Now, here's my point. I was able to show agreement between the Quran and modern science. I showed a verse of the Quran, then I showed the article, and I showed where the two agreed, word for word, like, like the barrier in the sea. That's word for word agreement. Why can't you do that with the Quran? That's the question tonight. That's where the miracle is. That's where the big win is. Quibbling about what is science and stuff like that. Okay, I will give you the Cambridge definition, you know, it says over here, uh, relate something which relates to science. Simple. Something which relates to science, that's scientific. But the big elephant in the room here tonight is that there are verses in the Quran, and we talked, uh, one of them actually I was referring to about how the human, uh, I'm sorry, de gender determination by the sperm. That is mentioned in the Quran, okay? That is undeniable. It is a consistent pattern of of making scientifically correct statements. And yeah, you could say, okay, let's reinterpret that to make it mean something else. You could do that, sure. But the question is, one of the valid interpretations is agreement with science. So there's a pattern of this behavior in the Quran. So it's a frequency. The miracle is in the frequency, not in the individual occurrence. Individually, you could, various, maybe you meant something else by that. Sure. So let's get back to the issue which uh, you are kind of referring to, uh, about the man being created from dust. That's perfectly fine to say, because this is talking about the creation of Adam. Adam was created by God. Seconds. This again, this is another miracle, and we don't apply scientific method to miracles. And I know at the Academy of Atheist Pseudoscientific Academy for Excellence, they do that, but that's just not what 
the rest of the world does. So this is in complete harmony That's with time. modern science by saying Adam was created from dust. All right, over to you, Mark. Two minutes. Yeah, so it doesn't say word for word that there's paraclines um, or barriers in the state. So barriers in the state, it doesn't say word for word. So again, you've mis misquoted what word for word for word means word for word. It doesn't mean like it says barriers in the state. So that equals the scientific understanding of, you know, the, the like you don't know what word for word. You keep using that word. I don't think you know what it means. Um, look, I mean, I, I love that you brought up the sperm because in actual fact, and as, as it says in the Quran, that it, that it makes a blood clot and then Allah decides the sex of that blood clot. And I can find the um, mm -hmm. the um, um, the the verse for that as well. And I did bring up how the the formed from clay um, match does not match evolution. And the whole point is that evolution says that that's how humans came about. Any humans. So there is no Adam or Eve in the evolutionary history. There, there's, it's not there. And, and it precludes an Adam and Eve. And that's what you're skipping over. No human was made from clay. Any human. Like, I, I can't believe that you're actually saying, well, no, it is scientific. It's saying the first humans were made from clay. That is not what science says, Nadia. I'm really sorry, but I brought up the article about human development uh, uh, from evolution. And it does not have clay nor dust anywhere in there. It is a contradiction with science. Um, I will again bring up, you did not define the word science. You basically said scientifically is related to science, but you didn't actually define science in any way, shape or form. Again, you're dodging. You're just avoiding the, the issue. That's four times now I've asked you. You're still avoiding. Um, and, and I'll bring up that the, the Quran says that the sperm, it makes a clot and then Allah decides seconds. the sex of, of the baby. We know as a fact that medical researchers know as a fact that at conception the the sex of the birth is uh, of the the child is decided not in a clot and Allah isn't involved in any way so that is that's unscientific tough. that's an unscientific claim okay one look, more round and then we'll go to uh go back to screen sharing so over to you Nadir yeah look um Mark I mean anybody can sit here and yeah. start rattling off then the Quran's wrong here and the Quran's wrong there and the Quran's wrong here and the Quran's wrong there and the Quran's wrong there Come on, what is this? Bring up one issue, bring up one verse, bring an article and show the contradiction between the two. You will not do that, okay? This modern day debate is a graveyard of atheists who try to do what you are doing. Okay, now, please try to understand, I'm not a Superman over here where I can just jump on all these alleged claims. Oh, it, it's wrong over here. You see, it says clot. And and, and at conception time, you see, that's when it's really the, the, the baby's born. And, Give me a break. This is ridiculous. You're panicking, Mark. You are panicking in tonight's debate because you know you cannot show a clear contradiction between science and the Quran. Now, let me let me show you the word for word agreement on barriers. I don't know if I'm able to show my seat, um, my, my my screen, but I will just read to you what I have and then I'll, I will show it to you. Look what science says. NASA's website over here. Picnic line which is that acts as a barrier, Quran, talking about the seas. Between them is a barrier, word for word agreement. That's what I mean. So there you go. You see, I slowly put the two together. And if I can share my screen, I can show you. I can take an article of NASA. I can take a verse of the Quran and show the agreement with the two between the two, but you cannot do that with the Quran. Well, I mean, you can, I'm sorry, you cannot uh, show a contradiction between the Quran and science, like the way how I'm showing agreement. I think that's a question which we need to ask tonight. Why isn't Mark able to do that? 15 seconds. Why? Why were the first issue of the epic fail about the streak and all that nonsense which he was trying to produce here tonight? So the question about what makes the Quran a scientific miracle. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 the, the barrier could, if we just look at this one verse, we could say, okay, maybe it's tr talking about... That's time. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Um, yeah, and honestly, I, I, yeah, I have no problem going back to screen sharing, but uh, I do find it, uh, it is a lot easier to focus on what people are saying when, uh, when there's not too much going on on the screen. But uh, like I said, for the podcast, it's not going to matter either way. So over to you, uh, Mark, two minutes. Yeah, well, I mean, Nadir keeps saying, hey, show this on the screen kind of thing. I, I, I think that he's just sort of trying to obfuscate. And I can show it on the screen if we are allowed to screen share where, yes, you know, do. it says that Let's you, go you for want it. that. It, we, oh, it, has, okay. it has been 10. It has, that's what I said. So, uh, yeah, yeah. If you want to go ahead.
Yeah, it's on the screen now. Uh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Um, I can pause your timer for a second here while you bring that up. Yeah, there's, there it is, there it is. All right, go for it. Okay. Yeah, so this is where saying then he was a clinging clot and Allah created his form and proportioned him, then made him two mates, the male and the female. So this is where it says it's a clinging clot and then Allah makes of him in the next verse a male or a female. Now, that is not what happens. In fact, the sex of a baby, and I'll just show you the, the it's from Science Daily, um, geneticist uh, from the University of Melbourne. The sex of a baby is determined by its chromosome makeup at conception. Now, I, I really don't know how this will be word for word exactly the same, but I'm sure it will be in some way, right? Um, so, uh, you know, the, the, it's actually decided by which sperm reaches the egg. Allah doesn't have any say in it, uh, as far as we know. I mean, but this is the kind of thing that he's trying to claim is scientifically accurate. Now, there's stuff like sandbars, which are called barrier bars as well. So if that was the case, like Nadia may claim, hey, a barrier bar is a barrier in the sea. Look at how correct the Quran is. He could be talking about the, the difference between salt and fresh water. Oh, it's a barrier. That, that could be what they're talking about. So he's basically interpreting it to fit whatever scientific fact he still has not given a definition of science um the fact that i'm panicking I'm, I'm not the one who's being asked questions and not addressing them he's not addressing what science actually is and i want this to be absolutely clear to everybody he is dodging this question because he says oh you've got the wrong science your understanding of science is incorrect well enlighten us all nadir Give us your definition of science and we'll see if it meets my definition or if we can find middle ground in some way. But I don't think you know what science is. I don't think you know what it is. I don't think you know how it's implemented. I don't think you know anything about it. All right, that is time. And I found a way to screen share and keep us on the screen by doing a window capture. So uh, feel free to share away there, gentlemen. Do I need to kick this okay. up, Nadir? Uh, yeah, do you, want to, do you want him to take it down, Nadir? No, that's fine. You can leave it up there. Okay. Okay, sure. so when conception, when the actual male and the female is determined, that's not mentioned in the Quran. Okay, it's nowhere mentioned. This is that male and female, when this determination actually happens, it's going to be at this point. There is nothing like that in the Quran. Rather, the determination is made at conception. Now you got to build what you made, right? So it's like you've got your you've got your blueprints that we know what the plan is. We want a male. OK, great. Now we've got to build it. Right. <laughs> so that's all the Quran is stating over here. OK, so now the parts are being made for this particular person. But nowhere does it say that the determination for the baby, or I'm sorry, for a male or female, is taking place after the alaka stage or what you're showing over here. That's not what the Quran says. Once again, another epic fail <laughs> of trying to show a contradiction between the Quran, okay? So let's get back to the issue about science. Yeah, I'm running away from it because it's kind of dumb. I mean, what you, all I'm doing is what you are doing, okay? When I saw that you are trying to show a contradiction between the Quran and science, I'm like, okay, let me show an agreement between the Quran and science. All right? The, all I'm doing is what you're doing there. Okay? So if I can, let, let's pretend, I mean, I could play the same game you're playing. Let's pretend you did show a scientific error in the Quran. Okay, let's just go along with that. I can sit there, but define science. What's scientific? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and try to avoid the issue at, at, at play here. So yet again, a second fail. Another fail tonight of trying to show a contradiction between the Quran and the science. But though I do thank you for finally sharing your desktop, not rattling off, Quran's in air over here, Quran's over here, evolution and play and this. I can't keep up with that. So, but let's get back to the issue. to set your timer. So we'll say 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds. Okay, thanks. So, where the scientific miracle is, is that on the seas, the scientific agreement occurred in triplets. Three scientifically correct statements in a row. In order to disprove this Quran is not a scientific miracle, you are supposed to show us scientific errors pertaining to oceans, not clot gender stuff. Because if you're doing scientific research, then it's through trial and error. Mark. If you don't show a scientific error on, on marine biology, oceanography, 
the game is over. That's it. Because then we know this is verse is a scientific miracle because how can you rattle off about something you don't even know what you're talking about? Like sometimes, which I do. And I put my foot in my mouth. So that's where the scientific miracle is. You made three scientifically correct statements and you didn't make an error. So the scientific miracle is not really in the agreement, but in the fact that you didn't make an error. That's where the miracle is. And that's what Mark is failing to show. So would you like to address my challenger? You got to show a scientific error pertaining right. to that oceanography. Yeah, so, um, yeah, you're, you're completely mistaken, uh, Nadir. I'll just shut my share. Um, you're, you're completely mistaken. The, the the topic of this debate is not, is the Quran scientifically accurate on oceans? That is not the topic of the debate. The topic of the debate is, is the Quran scientifically accurate? So your thing of, oh, well, you have to do it on oceans is complete nonsense, absolute nonsense. I don't have to show a scientific error on oceans. I just have to show a scientific errors. That's all. That's absolutely all. Um, so... Um, it's absolutely inconsistent. I showed scientific errors on what men are made out of by, by the ally. But I showed scientific error about how uh, 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 conception works and how the sex is decided on, on birth. Um, you said I didn't have a definition of science, which is blatantly wrong. And, and I can't believe you're saying this because I actually included three in my presentation. I'll go for the one that's the science council because I quite like them. Science is the pursuit and application of the knowledge and understanding of the natural and social world following a systematic methodology based on evidence. That is my definition of science. Lock that in. So your claim that, oh, I, I don't know because I didn't define science. No, you're projecting, Nadir. You didn't define science. You've run away from it. You've had multiple times to address it. This is this must be the fifth or sixth time I've asked you for your definition of science. And you, you just admitted that you're running away from it. So maybe I'll drop that. You're, you're running away from the definition of science. But then I wonder how you possibly can make any coherent article uh, uh, argument on, on how the the uh, the um, um, uh, Quran is scientifically accurate, if your your definition of scientifically is pertaining to science and you don't know what science is, how can you make any any argument on that? Like you seem to say, well, I don't know what science is, but the the Quran has it. I mean, that is the, the most ridiculous argument that I've ever heard. I'm really sorry, but that is that is terrible. Fifteen seconds. I'm sorry. Over to you, Nadir. Yeah. So, I, I mean, you're quibbling about what science is. Uh, the definition I like to follow is science is that which the which the scientific community agrees on. There you go. You've got your definition. But all that is irrelevant to the fact that, yeah, you do. You do got to show a scientific errors pertaining to ocean. Oceanography. That's it. It's over. It's game over for you. It's tap out if you don't. The reason why is because the scientifically agree, uh, statements which... We find in the Quran that there are barriers in the sea. Um, there are, you know, uh, o o internal waves in the ocean. We find no light at the bottom of the ocean. I mean, this is all we find verses in the Quran which agree with these scientific facts. How can a man rattle off scientifically correct statements and not make a mistake? If Muhammad was doing research that occurs through trial and error, of course, we know he can't be doing that because it takes modern day technology to to do those type of things. So we can rule that out. We know that he's not doing research because he would have made an error, which you are not able to show. And there are no scientific errors pertaining to oceans or anything like that in the Quran. So so then we know it's not research. We know it's not guessing. You just can't guess all these things. That leaves one explanation that this is something which is supernatural or inexplicable. We have no good natural explanation how a man can rattle off three scientifically correct statements without making an error and then talk about how the, you know, uh, that the sperm determines a gender and then talk about, uh, you know, correct six scientific errors of the Bible. And I have so many more scientifically correct seconds. statements, but I have enough to seal the deal, to conclusively argue my case that the Quran is a scientific miracle. And Mark has no good explanation for the agreement between science, in which he actually agrees that the Quran corrected six errors of the Bible. He has no explanation for that. Over to you, Mark. Um, so you know, a definition of science on the, which the scientific community agrees on, I think that's a flawed definition. I'll explain why. It's because automatically evolution would be true. Um, automatically um, um, other things would be true that you probably disagree with. 
Um, so the problem problem comes that if somebody is starting to investigate, um, say a something that isn't accepted, like Mary Schweitzer, who basically contended that that um, soft tissue could last for a longer time, and that's not accepted by the scientific community yet, and I want to make that clear yet, then that is not science, and we know that she was doing science. So your, your definition is a hundred percent flawed. It can't be that. Um, so. Um, yeah, it, it, you don't need modern scientific methods to do science. Aristotle back in the ancient Greek days was doing science. He might not have been accurate about everything, but he was certainly doing science. So, um, you know, Pythagoras was doing science. You don't need modern med, uh, uh, scientific methods in order to do science. You just need a empirical methodology that is is according to the scientific methods. And they certainly were using that. It's just a shame Muhammad never used it because it's very, very effective in finding things out. Um, so uh, oceans, I don't know why you're on about oceans again. It, I already pointed out as well, just because this is, you seem obsessed with oceans, that the the Quran says that you hardly see anything at the bottom of the sea. That's not true. You don't see anything at all. Light does not actually reach there. So hardly is not a word that should be used there. It's scientifically inaccurate. There you go. There's your ocean debunk. Um, um, yeah, but, you, you know, so so your, your, your definition of science is flawed. Your, your um, claims that I didn't provide contradictions between science and, and the Quran is flawed because I provided many, many contradictions. You just are using um, justification to explain them away, which, as I pointed out, was a pseudoscientific way of trying to deal with this kind of thing. Um, and then you'll go to, you know, conspiracy and all of this Stop. kind of stuff next. Thank you. All right, over to you. Yeah. Um, okay, so... You know, I think uh, you the uh, where you failed, uh, you know, Mark, which we all saw. I mean, we all saw this happen. You tried to show, you tried to produce an article, and then you tried to show a contradiction between the article and, and the Quran. You tr you failed by the streaks in the sky. You thought, oh yeah, you see, the Quran's talking about that. No, it, no, it's not. <laughs> then you try to show that the determination of whether it's going to be male or female, that's in the verse. You were no, it's not talking about that. It's talking about making the parts now. Okay? So you failed there. I want to have some more fun with you. Can you please show us another one of these contradictions between the science of the Quran, um, between the Quran and some scientific journal? We've seen oh, the two or three fails, unless I'm forgetting one. And I'm actually having fun with those. But here's my point. You will never be able to do that. You will never be able to show a contradiction between modern science and and the Quran. Now, did I address all of the points of Mark? Of the Quran's contradicting here? The Quran's contradicting there? No, I can't catch up with all that stuff. Okay? I can do one at a time. Now, the issue, you said, no, the Quran is wrong because it says you can hardly see it. Uh, let's read the verse very quickly over here, okay? It says over here, and to uh, uh, the darkness for some upon, uh, the one who puts out his hands he can hardly see it, and it compares. This is the what he's talking about. And to he whom Allah has not granted light, for him there is no light. It compared the bottom of the ocean with no light. But there is a point in the sea where you can actually see it. So there's no error over there. Come on, what are you talking about there? So the issue here is the sea miracle, I think, has sealed the deal. Three scientifically correct statements That's about tough. oceans without making an error, I think, rest the case. No more need no more needs to be said about the scientific miracle of the Quran. All right, two minutes. Uh, Show us another mistake, uh, Mark. I was having fun with that. Show us another article and where it contradicts science. Could you do that for us? All right, over to you. Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, I could do this all day, to be honest with you. Yeah, do it, um, do it. Uh, we're having fun with that. Show the article and so then show could the you Quran. Just, could you just repeat again why there is no light at the bottom of the ocean, according to Quran? Well, it doesn't say why. It just says it, it compared. Says the, it made a comparison between the Do you need, me to, do you need the me to read it out? Do you need me to actually go and find yeah, it? Go or are you gonna, no, no, are you show us some scientific error. Show us some scientific error in the it. Quran. Okay, so you're not going to actually be sort of um, um, no, 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 Mark, honest. I want you to show us a scientific error. Show this the scientific journal and the Quran, and let's see the mistake between the two. Come on, we so were having the, fun with the, that. The Quran says that there's no light at the bottom of the ocean because Allah has not granted them light. Is that correct? 
No, that's not what the Quran's. Well, what the Quran actually did, it made a comparison with a disbeliever that it said it's that his is it's like a it's like a um it, the actual verse says it says the darkness within the within the seas where which are covered by waves upon waves over which are clouds darkness some uh, and some of them upon others when one puts out his hand he could hardly see it and to he and to whom allah has not granted light for him there is no light so what the Quran Thank did compare. Yeah, 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 I'll yeah. take my the rest of my time now. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, so so we're I, going I have to screen share time, because Nadia is absolutely like seriously. I don't know why I have to share this again That's and what I was again. Saying. And let's again. try to go right. with the flow, everybody. But let's uh, let's go into the timer. So two minutes, Mark. Yeah. Okay. So um, this is basically that saying Allah has not granted light for him. There is no light. Now, light can only penetrate beneath below the surface of the ocean. It travels through the water, the molecules and water scatter and absorb it. At great depths, lights are so scattered, there's nothing left to detect. So this is the scientific reason as to why there is no light at the bottom of the ocean. The Quran gives Allah has not granted light. That is not scientifically accurate, not scientifically accurate at all. Now, I, I, I basically produced all of these articles showing the contradiction. He just wants to wave them away. That's fine. That's fine. Um, so, but I, but I love how he went to, oh, they're lamps in the sky. They're not, doesn't say stars. They say lamps. Um, when called mm -hmm. out on that, that lamps are unscientific, Nadir went back to, well, now they're back at stars. Um, then he's got to somehow explain how these stars in alignment with science are thrown mm -hmm. at jinn. So, Nadir, do you think you can produce the scientific paper that say jinn exists and that the stars in the sky are thrown at them to drive them back, as the Quran says? So I'm going to challenge you to produce that, to show that that is scientifically accurate. I can produce something that says that, you know, stars are burning balls of plasma that that have, by gravitational force, have, you know, undergoed nuclear synthesis. But, but you know... <laughs> I, 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 the, the whole idea that I have to share my screen to to acknowledge basic scientific facts is getting a bit ridiculous. So I, I'll challenge um, um, Nadia to produce the scientific paper that stars are, 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 are lights thrown at Jin. Sure, sure. Okay. Right, over to you. So uh, let me let me start my two minutes. I'm going to share my desktop here. Okay. I, what I what I will do, I'll show you how the verse is actually a scientific miracle. Okay. And so, Just but now as far as Okay, are you starting my two minutes? Uh, yeah, you can go ahead and share your screen and start your two minutes there. Awesome. <clears throat> okay, so the thing is, it's talking about the supernatural once again. So from, as I have already showed you from the scientific point of view, the, the science is silent on the supernatural. It's not going to confirm or deny it. So if you want to believe the motion of the earth causes uh, good to happen in the universe, that's perfectly fine from a scientific point of view. So science doesn't care about these things. Now, as I said, in the field of atheist pseudoscientific pseudo quackology, this is a big problem. Yes, I agree, but not according to modern science. Now, let me get to the miracle here. So this, if you go to the Hadith of Prophet Muhammad, look at this right here. He talked about this verse in the Quran, okay? The, and I'm going to go through this very quickly because I don't have a lot of time here, okay? So... The, the people, the Arabs, they um, uh, I'm sorry, what they basically said, they asked him, they saw the shooting star. They said, this is Rajuman, this is a this is a star being shot or being thrown. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> let, me, let me start again. What the, what it says over here, uh, it says, let me read this very quickly. It says, when we were with the messenger of Allah, we, and while he was sitting with a group of his companions, when they saw the glowing shooting star, that's a scientific error. That's not a shooting. That has nothing to do with stars. Now, if Muhammad was a false prophet, he would have confirmed that. Yeah, you see them stars? Let me tell you about them stars. Yeah, yeah. He would have said that. But look at what he says over here. He says, when you saw this, during the days of ignorance, what did you say about that? Notice he refuses to confirm the scientific error of the people of his time. Very good. And then furthermore, he explains, well, let me tell you what they are. He began, he said what those things are. He quoted a verse in the Quran in which it stated that this is something which is shihab. I'll get you that verse in just a second. But what did that verse actually state? And I'll get you the verse, something which is burning. He quoted a verse in the Quran and said, that is something which is burning. That's exactly what those streaks Five in seconds. the sky is. 
something, a meteor burning in the atmosphere. Two scientifically correct statements in this one hadith. So that's why I believe in the Quran. Muhammad passed the challenge there. All right, over to you, Mark. Yeah, you can leave that screen up. So it says the shape and try to over. Uh, go back up, go back up, go back up, go back up. No, 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 no. You don't get away that easy, Nadia. Come on down. Um, it says the shape and try to over here. No, back down. The end of that. Yeah, the shape and try to over here. So they are shot at. So they cast it down to their their friends. Like the, the the entire thing says that it's shooting at devils. Like this is the whole point. So again, I mean, it's incredible how much Nadia backflips on this one. He said there were lamps, and then suddenly we're back to shooting stars and meteorites. Like, is there any consistency to your claims whatsoever? You're just changing the narrative with what you think will work. Explain away this obvious, obvious contradiction in front of you. And I might add. I predicted this in my opening, where things aren't based upon evidence, they're based upon interpretation. And Nadir wants to interpret however he wants. So, um, you know, so so he said, like, sort of, well, your atheist quackery, uh, you know, the scientific, what the scientific community agrees on was Nadir's definition. So by his own um, his own definition, his God claims and, and the devils and all of this supernatural stuff is unscientific because the scientific community agrees that gods and supernatural things and devils are unscientific. They all agree on that. Even the most fervent believer believes that, hey, that's unscientific. It's not in the realm of science. So that is unscientific by Nadir's own definition. Um, um, and and <laughs> yeah, it, it does say that they're trying to overhear things at heaven. So, you know, I, I don't know why we have to point out that the Quran does not say that meteorites or shooting stars, which are not in fact stars or lamps or any of the things that Nadir tries to claim they are, um, is not um they're 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 rocky or or metallic um fragments from other um astronomical, you know, this is what passes for scientifically accurate in Nadir's book, which is terrible because when you compare it with what a NASA document says they are, they are not being flung at devils. They are not being, you know, to keep them from overhearing secrets of heaven. No. All right. Over to you, Nadir. Uh, are we keeping okay. the screen up or are we going to? Yeah, I, I want to show I finally found my verse here because sure, it's showing the scientific miracle here. Okay, yeah, I know you. there was some confusion between stars, lamps. Some verses say stars, some verses says lamps, and I was trying to juggle between the two, so I might have confused some people out there. But now, but the whole thing which you said that because this is talking about gods and devils, this is unscientific in the world of, I guess that, I mean, in the world of atheist pseudoscientific quackology, yes, it's a problem. It's a very big problem, but not according to modern science. You showed no reference that you actually falsely claimed that if you believe God, devils, supernatural, this is unscientific. No, it's not. No, it's not. Okay? I've already, and you showed no reference for what you're talking about. You're just, blah, 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 blah. You're just you know, rattling off things with no references. At least I am trying to show references. Okay? Now, let me show you the verse, Muhammad. He quoted this verse. When that streak occurred in the sky, his, the, the, the followers said, that's a shooting star. Rujum al Najum. I'm sorry, throw, throwing, actually it translates to throwing star in Arabic. Muhammad refuses to acknowledge that. He won't say that. He says, so what do you guys say about that? Very good. He refuses to repeat the scientifically incorrect understanding of the people of his time. So now, let without further ado, let's look at the verse. He, he said, let me tell you what that really is. He quoted the oops, he quoted this following, he quoted this verse right over here. He says, But if anyone, if anyone does not succeed in snatching a glimpse of such knowledge, he is henceforth pursued by a piercing flame, something which is burning in the seconds. atmosphere. That's exactly what science says. That when you see that streak in the sky, that's a meteor burning in the atmosphere. Now, whether you say, okay, well, they're being flung at something evil, at a devil, from a scientific point of view, that's perfectly fine. You can believe whatever you want about the supernatural. Five There's no problem there. But this verse has backfired upon him. It has actually shown the scientific accuracy of the, of, of, the, of, the, of the Prophet Muhammad, and that 
pretty much seals the deal. Actually, the ocean verse seals it, but this one did it. Yeah. All right, back over to you, Mark. Okay, so a lot of lot of rhetoric from from Nadir and his his atheist stuff. Um, so this isn't like miracles and gods and stuff aren't just unscientific to atheists and and stuff like that. They're they're unscientific to theist scientists as well, and and all theist scientists. Like we understand what science is. Um, and it's also unscientific according to his own definition, because he said science is that which the scientific community agrees on. And they agree that gods and miracles and demons and devils are, are, are unscientific. We don't investigate those with science. They're unscientific because science is methodological naturalism. Um, find me a scientific paper on, on miracles. You, you won't find one. You, you will not find one. Um, there might be an anthropology paper on people believing in miracles or trying to investigate them, but you won't find one on, you know, an actual physics paper on miracles. They're not in the purview of science. So they're unscientific, even by Nadir's definition. Um, and and this, this, this whole thing about him saying, oh, well, sometimes it says lamps, sometimes it says this. How is it then scientifically accurate? It, it can't be. If it says it's lamps in one place and then it says it's it's sort of missiles in another place or says it's stars in another place, then it isn't scientifically accurate. It isn't accurate at all. Um, Nadia seems to believe that maybe some poetic or flowering language is no problem in the Quran. It's just it's whatever you, your, your poetic interpretation is. Well, a proper scientifically accurate book will have zero poetry. There's no biology book where you get a haiku on the... the um, the, the position of frogs in the ecosystem halfway through, Nadir. There's no sonnet about the, the pollination of flowers in your biology book because it is a scientifically accurate book. So I realise that the Quran partly is poetry. It is this hyper, hyperbolic language. I realise that. But that's one of the reasons why it is an unscientific book because you don't put poetry in a science book. It's done. Okay, so yeah, you know, actually, Mark, you know what I would like for you to do? I want you to show us another another one of those contradictions between modern science and and the Holy Quran. You remember how you had those two articles and you tried to juxtapose it? Please do. I want share some more of that with us. I, I had a lot of fun with that, so I I do extend that invitation for you again. I'd like to see that. Uh, but now, once again, he has misrepresented science what science says about miracles. I have already refuted you on this. Let's share the article again. They don't deny, you know, gods, goddesses, demons. You want to believe that the sun, the star, the moon is chasing uh, a devil or that's all perfectly fine. No problem. Let's read together carefully. The place, this is from how, how, how the scientific method works. If you can see my screen, um, it yep. says this sure places this places here. certain topics beyond the reach of the scientific method. It's beyond the reach. So when you talk about lamps being hurled at devils or things like that, it's beyond the reach of the scientific method. Science cannot prove nor or disprove or, or refute the existence of God or any supernatural entity. So that's why I, I I always emphasize show a reference, show an article for what you are saying. And as you can see, Mark has no reference. He's just making bogus claims and he has just been refuted by by science here. So I think the debate's over. The, 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 the triplet miracle, ocean miracle, that is three scientifically correct statements of the Quran without making an error proves it to be a scientific miracle. And as Mark would also agree, Muhammad corrected six scientific errors of the Bible. And so how is one man able to do all of this. And of course, we saw the one astonishing verse where it said he created the male and the female uh, uh, from the sperm. It is a sperm which, determine, which determines the gender. And that's exactly what we find in the Quran. Well, I will inject real quick and say uh, we've been going for, what, uh, an hour and 20 minutes about. Uh, we are going to have a Q&A uh, once we're wrapped up uh, our back and forth here. So um, I think we're done. Yeah, I, I, I was picking up what well, you were I think putting I'd down. Like to I finished to early. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to respond. To well, that. don't say that well, on the I mean, internet. You'll get our okay. live chat really uh, wild. Uh, go, yeah. go ahead there, Mark, yeah, and we'll end up. Okay, the, uh... so I, I love that he puts this on the screen because, it, like, well, certain topics, be, but 
between beyond the reach of the scientific method makes them unscientific. That's the whole point that Nadia seems to keep missing again and again and again. If something is not investigated by science, it is unscientific. Just as I pointed out that me guessing that Nadia uses a hair clipper is unscientific because I'm not applying the scientific method. So any failure to apply the scientific method, including to gods and the supernatural, makes it unscientific. Now, if you could take your, your, your screen down, I'd like to share again. Because um, Nadir keeps asking for it. I mean, I, he's a sucker for punishment. I gotta, I gotta say, like you know, I, I don't know what's up with you, Nadir. You, you must like punishment, mate. But here we go again. Uh, here's another one. So the Quran says that um, humans are created from a fluid ejected, emerging between the backbone and the ribs. Yay! That's awesome. What does science say? That it comes from seminal vesicles, the prostate, and the bioureteral glands. Um, if you do know your biology, and I, I wouldn't guarantee you do, they are nowhere near in between ba the backbone and the ribs. So they don't, it doesn't come from your chest, Nadia. That's not where it comes from. That is a clear, like if you were a medical student and you got this wrong, if you said, hey, it's between the backbone and the ribs, you would absolutely fail. That would be scientifically inaccurate, 100% inaccurate. So there's another one. I mean, I could do this for hours on end. That's the thing. There's so many mistakes in the Quran. The difficulty isn't finding them. It's picking between them when you want to, you know, one or two to, to present to you because there are so many. And, and the, the idea that, oh, because science doesn't investigate gods, well, then gods exist and that's scientifically accurate. That is the most nonsense thing I've ever heard. No, if science doesn't address it, it's unscientific. That's the way it works. All right. Let's go into the Q and A. Oh, everybody, I, I need to. I need to. Can I address backbone and ribs real quick, and then we can do that? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, let's do one minute there. Oh, Jake, give me two minutes, please. Okay. Okay. Twist I'll my rubber arm. Give him two minutes. Give him two minutes. Oh. I, I really want to hear this. Yeah. Yeah. All okay, right. Thank all right. You Twist so my rubber arm, you guys. All right. Two minutes. <laughs> okay. Let me. I'm going to share my screen if I if I may. If you give me a second. Sure. I'll end. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Take mine down. Yeah. I'm sorry. I've been just stopping you guys when your screen shares just to try to make it quick for you. So go ahead, Nadir. Okay, well, I just want to quickly address him on the point where he, when it said that, you know, it's beyond the scientific method. Science doesn't, he said, well, therefore, it's it's unscientific. That's his wacky, quacky interpretation. Nowhere does it say that gods, goddesses, heaven or hell, these are unscientific. Now, in atheist pseudoscientific quackology, yes. It contradicts quackology. Yes, yeah, atheist quackology, but that's perfectly fine from a scientific point of view. So, backbone and ribs, this is due to his... Um, misunderstanding of the human body. Now, when we talk about the between the backbone and the ribs, we, of course, we would think like the rib cage right over here, you know. So is the sperm being produced over there? Of course not. But science today tells us that the backbone and the ribs is also between the rib and your tailbone. That's also between the backbone and the ribs. Now, look what it says over here. It says, talking about the kidney, between the bottom of your rib cage and your hips. So that's also another place. So now when we let's let's go very quickly to this picture which I have over here. And here we see that there's a vas deferens. This is a tube which is right above the bladder. Okay. Now, what's interesting about this tube, see, seminal fluid actually travels up through this uh and it, and it and then it finally ejects out of the uh, out of the penis as ejaculation. So let's look at another picture here. I think I got over here. Yeah. Now here's what my point here on that is. Oops, where is it? There's my picture. Yeah. Here's what my point here. Look what's off right on the right hand side. You've got the backbone, and right above his head is the ribs. The vas deferens is right um, between the backbone and the ribs. So once again, the Quran made a beautiful uh, analogy, a beautiful description of where e where semen is ejaculated from between the backbone and the ribs is absolutely scientifically accurate. There you go. The ribs weren't even on that picture. Well, you know, it's it's right. The ribs are right above your. Uh, if you're standing on top of the vas deferens, you look up, the ribs are going to be right there. <laughs> yeah, they're not between your backbone and your ribs, though. Okay, you're just making affirmations. Oh, yeah, right. of course it is. Before we before we circle the drain, <laughs> fellas, let's get into the Q and A. Okay. So, for anybody hanging sure. out in the live chat, if you haven't already, uh, let's hit the like button. Uh, let's see, uh, yeah, just a little over four hundred. Let's see if I, we can get as many of you. Yeah, I'll just say as many. We won't put the bar too high, right? It's 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 Friday, isn't it? Expectations can't be too high. 
All right. Not for me. Saturday morning for me. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. Up in the future. Oh, yeah, going to go watch some Saturday morning cartoons after this, are you? I think this was a Saturday morning cartoon. Oh, my God. Answer. Don't, don't, don't let me d stop that. All right. Bitter Truth coming in. Uh, and keep the super chats coming in. We'll keep the conversation rolling. It's been a lot of fun, fellas. Uh, Bitter Truth, uh, thank you so much. $5 says, we formed human from blood clot or clinging clot. Wrong, Nadir. Chapter 96, verse 2, never says that. Look look that up, Nadir, I think is what you meant. So well, chapter 96, verse 2, if you want to check it out. Wait a second, wait a second here. What's going on? We just, me and Mark, just had a, a wonderful debate here. We talked about the scientific miracles of the Quran. We talked about agreement. It would be nice that if the people who are in the question and who are asking the questions could talk about what we just talked about rather than just ignoring everything we talked about and trying to start a second debate on alleged scientific errors. Okay, so I would I would like to ask the people who are going to ask questions, ask questions about what we talked about and what we debated about. But very quickly, I will address that. Uh, but the question, can you can you tell me what the, what was the question again? Um, yeah, so uh, about the clot. If, if I know anything about uh, Better Truth, uh, what he's saying is uh, basically he's saying that it, he doesn't think it's scientific to say we formed human from blood clot or clinging clot. Wrong, mm -hmm. Nadir. Chapter 96, verse 2. Oh, yeah. Never says. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I'm just trying to put the emphasis on the right syllables okay. there, guys. So go ahead. <laughs> well, yeah, so he, he's been refuted many times on this, and he refuses to accept that that word alaka has actually three meanings. Clot, something which clings, and, uh, I'm sorry, clot, some, and, and a leech-like thing, something which is leech-like. Leech -like. What has astonished the scientists is that every one of the meanings does accurately describe the embryo. Professor Keith Moore, as well as many, many other scientists, have actually talked and endorsed this verse that it is scientifically accurate. So he's just giving his opinions on what he thinks. But notice what I'm what my point here. The people who try to raise scientific errors of the Quran, it's not based on fact. It's based on their personal interpretations. And that's what we all saw tonight. Here, uh, that they're not really able to bring facts about this, but where the big win in this debate was that you really can take a scientific journal and show a contradiction between the scientific journal and the Holy Quran. That just will not happen, and it will never happen. Any Can I thoughts? just address that quickly? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is, again, post hoc rationalization. He takes something that is known about the embryo and says, hey, I can fit it to the Quran if I interpret it in this way and it's got three meanings, so I can use any of the three or all of the three or none of the three. Like, it really is just fitting in um, his book to what the science is. And because it is so vague, um, it, it, it fits in. And that's why it's unscientific, because A, it's so vague, it could mean anything. Um, it, it, it's not particularly accurate. It doesn't say that it's an embryo. It doesn't say it's development cycle. It doesn't say it's cells multiplying. It says it's a, a blood clot or a clinging clot, which it is not. It's not a clot at all. It is a embryo. Um, and and the, the, the problem is that, and, and I want to say, hey, if you've got super chats, send them out, whatever. I don't, I don't. I don't mind. Send them out whatever you want. Send them about my bald head. I don't. I don't care. Go for it. I. I. You know. I. It's your money, and and you get to ask whatever you want. Don't let Nadia tell you what you can talk and not talk about. He doesn't get to decide that. You send in super chats for whatever your heart desires. I will support it a hundred percent. Um, unless it's about my bald head. Um, so yeah, oh, it is scientifically accurate. Fair ball. You know. Come on. <laughs> um so so this is scientifically inaccurate it's not like it's not what you'll find in a medical journal it's not accurate in any way that you could teach somebody about what an embryo is actually in science that there's a reason why we don't have the quran in our science textbooks because it is scientifically inaccurate so this is just again post hoc rationalization trying to fit the quran to known fact that's all it is uh did you have any other thoughts there nadir before we move on yeah, I mean, we're trying to have a debate after the debate on the issue of clot. Let's, you know, I, the, the issue when they say, oh, this is un, all unscientific. Uh, notice that it's all based upon personal interpretation. That's all they're giving you here. What the, when, what the atheists say and the so-called errors of the Quran is not endorsed 
they will never be able to find a reference, a journal to substantiate what they claim. I think where the miracle here is, I have shown you many articles which I could take the Quran and I could show the scientific article and show the agreement between the two. But you can't do that to show a contradiction. That's where the miracle is. And I, and and that's what people need to ask. Why isn't that the case? Why can you not do that? Can I ask you a question, Nadia, just quickly? Sure, yeah. Will any change of evidence that scientists find into the future ever contradict what the Quran says? Mm -hmm. What if science changes? Well, the, uh, now that's kind of a tough question to ask here because, like, for example, one of the scientific miracles is, you know, which is. we talk, uh, there's just science we have to accept which will never change. Like, for example, um, washing your hands before you eat. One of the corrections which, which Islam did with the Bible, you know, that's just science which is not going to change, okay? If you're in the bathroom and you're wiping your butt and now you're going to go have yourself a burger, OK, I'm not going to sit here and wonder what if science changes and I can really not care about washing my hands. It's That's not just not going to happen. Yeah. Now, there is situations where science could change. And therefore, you said, aha, you see, the Quran is wrong on this issue because science changed. But what we what I have already pointed out is, look, one verse could have multiple interpretations. What if science today says there are no barriers in the ocean? No, oh, we just made it up, actually. Or let's just give an example. Well, we've already said that it could also refer to uh, islands. Because it has more than one interpretation, we can buffer ourselves like that. But where the so no scientific how, miracle is, is about seeing so, a pattern in the data. So no, how, no matter how science changes, the Quran is always going to be correct? This is God's word. You can't beat God's word. That's Thank what you. you are facing tonight. So the answer is yes. Is that right? Well, look, look. We, you can find scientific errors of the Bible. Muhammad corrected. Well, I'm not talking about scientific... the Bible. What, it, my, oh. what my question is, is that even if the science changes, the crime will still be correct. Is that right? Is that a yes to that? Last word for you, Nadir. Uh, well, so because the scientific, if you look at the science in the Quran, some of them can have more than one interpretation. In I that case... That. The Quran will not be proven wrong, but now there are oh. certain circumstances in the Quran which it makes absolutely a blanket statements. You know that, for example, one verse in the Quran talked about that in honey there's benefit for humanity. Now, if if science changes and says actually honey has no benefit for humanity, then yes, in that case it would be proven wrong. So there's certain circumstances where that could happen. All right, let's uh, move on. Matters Now for $5 says, Quran denies human evolution, the most evidence-based theories we have in science. Quran is wrong about evolution of humans. After show on Matters Now. Yeah, no, the Quran actually doesn't deny uh, human ev evolution. It actually, uh, well, if now orthodoxy, orthodoxy denies evolution, but could you really find a contradiction between evolution and the Quran, you probably won't. You're not going to be able to. Because one of the points which people point out about the Quran, it doesn't say Adam was the first man. It doesn't say that. So let me, I'm going to share my desktop if I could real quick. I could show you what some people can, um, you know, some I, theories some people can have here is here. If you could look at my picture, you go. you've got Adam off to the left over here. He could have made it with one of these uh, homo groups, and then from there we got all of humanity. So these are just some of the hypothetical situations people can bring up. I'm not saying that's what I believe, but what I'm saying is the Quran is actually open on this. So I don't see really any contradiction between evolution and the Quran. In fact, I don't even really discuss it. All right. Let's carry on. So we got lots of questions coming in, and I'm sure that there's going to be more pouring in uh, as uh, we continue on through these uh, questions. Uh, curious minds are going to want to know. So, Sunflower, so happy to see that you're here. Uh, let's see. Nadir, NIH paper from 2023 for heart disease, diabetes, and neurological disorders. Wine not only does not increase the risk of chronic degenerative diseases, but is also associated with health benefits. You're talking about wine, right? 
Yes. Alcohol, yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that this is so as you can see, this is this this guy's argument is gonna backfire on him. He still doesn't understand the science. Even though there are some health benefits to alcohol, the overall uh, harms outweighs the benefits. That's what science says. Look at you could go to your doctor when you do when you go for your physical exam, and when you tell him that I there's the check mark. Do you drink alcohol? And even for your eye exam, you can check mark no on that, and nobody's going to come in the room and say, "What? You don't drink beer? You need some alcohol in you?" No. Alcohol is, in spite of the good things which alcohol has, it is not needed by the human body, and the harms outweighs any benefits. This is word-for-word -word agreement with the Holy Quran in chapter 2, verse 219, where it explicitly says that the harm outweighs any benefit. So here's my point. Even in today, the year is 2024, these people can't get it right. How did Muhammad get it right 1,400 years ago? And he's not the only one, but if you look in my other debates, you still see people fumble on this. Oh, it can help your heart, you know. So this is actually an evidence, once again, that Muhammad is a true prophet because he got it right 1,400 years ago. I'm going to read this one early. Squid Super Hunk says, nice bald head, Mark. <laughs> he is bald, isn't he? Hey. You, I was gonna say, uh, is he? Is he Nadir? I don't know. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, no, it's okay. You're um, very bald, actually. Me. I'm not as bad as you. I, I think you are. I think no, you actually, are. I, see, the camera it doesn't catch some of the peach fuzz I have on my head. Maybe, yeah, I mean, maybe it's just I, a I cap, so the AI can't yeah. figure out your face, yeah, right? Maybe. You're, just, you're both wearing caps. That's it. All right, everybody. Let's. let's <laughs> all right. Do you, like, Mark, you you opened the door on this one. That's on you. I know. I know. I, I did it wantonly <laughs> and willingly. That's that's all good. All right. Well, let's carry on there, guys. Um, let's see. Bitter truth strikes again. Thanks so much. It says, Hey, Nadir, why are you ignoring me to debate? Let's debate. Is Quranic embryology compatible with medical science? Thoughts, Nadir? Good topic. Good yeah, topic. I don't. The, the people who are running away from the debates are actually the atheists. Look, the people with the big channels, the YouTube channel, they try to debate Quran and science, and they were defeated very badly. And you are yourself witnesses. I can call it. I can mention their names. They suffered terrible defeats, and now what, what is happening is, is the Quran is coming to an unchallengeable position here on Modern Day Debate. What, I mean, the fact that Mark and other people are coming forward, that's because they're trying to fill the void. They're trying to fill the void left behind by the retreating uh, atheists because they don't want to admit the things which Mark admits. Like, yes, the Quran did correct six scientific errors in the Quran, in the, in the Bible. Now, in terms of his debate challenge, it was James who has already uh, denied that. He said, you got to debate with your camera on. That's why you're not debating here. I mean, I'm open because there is nobody else left to debate. So, sure, I'll debate you. But one of the miracles and one of the points I want people to understand is the Quran is unchallengeable here on Modern Day Debate. Aaron Ra, Madhya Lahanta, and even the Christians, they're all running away from the scientific evidence of the Quran. That's a, and, and that is one of the evidences for this book. Well, I'd, I'd like to address that because you did talk about me. So yeah, I, I kind of, I enjoy debate and I, I sort of, I don't like that when people say, hey, atheists won't have debate. I, I kind of feel I need to step up. I'm not going to speak for other people. I think bitter truth is actually really good. Um, I know he is reluctant to use his camera and, and that's okay. I get that. But um, I think you should debate him, okay, if sure. not here on another platform. I think that atheists are stepping up. Um, I, I don't know if you're big enough to challenge those big names, Nadir. We all have sort of, um, you know, there's there's Christians and Muslims. I'd like to challenge, but they're, they're not up. You know, they wouldn't pay attention to me. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest with you, and I don't mean this in me, I kind of feel like I'm punching down at the moment. So, um, you know, I, I, I can sort of see them as not, you know, I, I don't think your arguments are particularly strong. So mm -hmm. I, I don't think they would actually go in for it because, you know, what what's in it for them, basically, is, is my question. Like, um, do you have a big following? Do you have, you know, audience members that will come in and support you and and sort of, you know, provide a, a another option of who to talk to kind of thing? 
Um, I'm really only here because you said atheists won't debate you and I'm an atheist. I'll debate you. Yeah. Better truth than atheist. He'll debate you. So what I'd ask, Nadir, is you stop saying atheists won't debate you because that is clearly untrue. It is a false statement. Well, atheists will debate you, just not the atheist that you want, like the big name guys. And so I, I don't want to mean, mean this harshly, but what you're doing is essentially clout chasing. You're saying, hey, big names, come and come and see me. You're not a big name, Nadir. I don't know why they would. Well, can, can I just say one thing real quick on that? I'm glad you raised this issue, and I'll prove to you that they are running away. And I'll give you irrefutable evidence. First of all, I have already debated them, okay? They lost very bad. Now, when I say they're running away, they're running away from the commitment they made publicly. Because in this debate I did, I'll just throw out a name like Aaron Ron, apostate prophet. I said, let's debate scientific miracle. They all said, yes, yes, uh-huh, sure, we'll do that, uh-huh. I said, great, guys. As soon as the debate was over, AP sent out an email saying, let's, I'm, I'm, let's I'm try, backing ground. Let's try not to talk about other speakers. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just name, but I just have already debated Just for the sake of courtesy. But yeah, so, I was going to say, private, yeah, okay. yeah. the fact that you debated them, that's fine. But let's yeah. not talk about like any private but engagements. The, the point here is, yeah, okay, I, I, won't, I won't mention the name. The point here is, they are running away, not from debating me, but from debating, the uh, honoring the commitment they made in front of everybody. And the problem here is they're debating anonymous weirdos on the internet. And they're debating teenage girls. And I am a bigger scholar than the teenage girls they are debating with. Now, I don't want to mention the names of people, but they are. So they are. The, the, my problem here is if they were, they are debating people who are anonymous weirdos on the internet, then why are they running away from me? When they're running away from the commitment they have already made. That's the scientific evidence for Prophet Muhammad. It's not about me. See, I'm only as good as the Quran allows me to be. My point here is they're not going to want to... Look, Matt, Mark, you have already conceded that, look, that the Quran corrected six scientific errors in the Bible, and I'm using that for proselytization purposes now. They don't want their names to be used for that. Okay? That's why they are running away. Well, I, I do want to address that because you did sort of say yes. what I, I said. And and what I said is the, the Quran may have gotten six things right that were wrong in the Bible, but I think like my position actually is that it got way more wrong than it got right. Like it, the, the Bible doesn't speak about lamps and stars in the sky. It doesn't speak about um, um, all these other stuff like like where, where semen comes from and things like that. It doesn't speak mm -hmm. upon stuff like that. I would be hard pressed to say whether which is more right, the Bible or the Quran. Um, I kind of think it, I, I sort of lean towards the Bible because the Quran makes these statements which are so obviously untrue. Um, but, you know, that's that's another story. Yeah. Well, okay, let's just go along with that. See, that is still enough to debunk the divinity of Christ. It is enough to debunk Christianity altogether. So let's just go along with it. Let's say Muhammad was a false prophet. The Christians now need to answer, how does this alleged false prophet correct six scientific errors in their book? How does he bring better answers than the very Lord and Savior himself? That's tap out. That's game over for Christianity. So that's why, you know, this is one of the most powerfulest evidences today Muslims have where we can go to the Christians and say, look, you guys, you guys are wrong. And now we have our atheists, and not just you, but other atheists as well, as well have come forward and has also conceded to that. And so now we got to make the Christians understand this is game over for them. And that's why they will not participate in these science debates. They are running away because they know that the scientific errors in their books are laughable and this man named Muhammad is correcting them. They're not going to participate in a debate like that. Only... Islam is the only religion which will debate Quran and uh, the science. All the Jews and the Christians and the Hindus, they will all run away. That's the way it's been for 30 years. So I think the big win, it's a big win for atheism and Islam that today we are the only ones who will debate science in our books. Okay? Because Christians will not do that. They, they're very, very selective on what topics they will debate. And they'll debate like, so you don't debate morality. Okay, does God exist? They will debate these cherry topics that will not do the catastrophic damage to their faith.
Oh, I was giving you 10 seconds to wrap up there. Yeah, but no, let's... I, uh, I'm, I'm good. Let's try to move on. We have uh, all kinds of questions that are coming in here. So uh, keep them coming in. And uh, do, I, I do have to ask, uh, you know, our speakers here, not everybody, so just uh, excuse me. Uh, so Mark, Nadir, uh, do either of you have any time constrictions uh, or would you like to get a drink, take a bathroom break? Uh, I'm good. I think no, maybe okay. like 10 more minutes I got and then we, I can we can... Holiday, maybe. I don't know. Okay, I um, we got uh, yeah, because we got what uh, probably about fifteen more super chats to go through. So if it's all right with you, I'm gonna set a one minute timer and we'll try to get through as many of these as we can. So uh, I'm just gonna say to the live chat here, uh, you know, uh, maybe one or more two two or more super chats and we gotta call it um, from there. So um, not not that we're reading out, just if they come in. So let's carry on and try to get through these. So. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Squid Super Hunk says, if something is scientifically unfalsifiable or otherwise can't be tested or corroborated scientifically, isn't that the exact definition of unscientific? One minute. Well, if you're talking about gods and goddesses and the, and the belief in the supernatural, the scientific world are not going to deny, confirm, or deny that. They're not going to use words like, this is unscientific. Now, atheists can do that, but that's not the scientific, that's not what the scientific world believes in. In fact, science actually promotes issue, uh, miracles. They actually promote uh, people believing in God because that does actually help heal people, and that is scientific. Uh, I was actually talking to a doctor, and um, he was a Muslim doctor, then, you know, when cancer, when people, when you talk to people and he tells them that, you know, and, and of course they're crying about getting the bad news that they're going to die of cancer. They only have six more months left to left. They're in depression. They're crying. He says, you know seconds. what I tell them? They, I tell them, go to church. Go, go to go to temple. Go to and, 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 and join a group. So actually the medical world, scientific world, is very cool with, with the uh, issue of God and miracles, and they actually do promote it. All right. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to add something to that if that's that's cool. Uh, all right, if you can do it quickly, because we, we're going to try to get through these. Yeah, so it actually, it science investigates the belief in God, not not the God itself. So the belief in God and beliefs and psychological states in general are investigated by science. That is covered under the scientific methodology, because we can investigate this using scientific methods. But it doesn't actually investigate the supernatural claims. That's when Nadir's got it wrong. Just because a belief in something may help you through a time of stress doesn't mean that that belief is being investigated. Uh, the, the thing itself is being investigated by science, only the belief. So he's got it wrong All again. Right. Let's try to move on from there, guys. So let's scroll down here. Well, does Nadir want so, a last word? Because that was kind of harsh. Well, yeah, I, I, I got a last word. Yeah, okay, go ahead. I was going to say, I, I know I forget, you said I you had some time, uh, limited time, so it's up to you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so all of that has been debunked by science itself. They do uh, actually uh, investigate the supernatural. The, mirror, the supernatural. I'll give you two examples. Um, there's an example of a nun whose body, who was buried like many years ago, and her body is still preserved. That's in Missouri. Just go ahead and Google that. Now, of course, Muslims show the same type of miracle, and science has confirmed it. There is, uh, if you just go put in YouTube, uh, um, Hindu milk drinking miracle. It has been confirmed by science that what we find from this milk, from this Ganesh or this idol, it's actually drinking milk. Uh, that miracle, you could see there's also another miracle about Mary uh, uh, crying tears of olive oil. Science actually did confirm that the tears in her eyes were, were, um, were olive oil. And just Google Mary tears or, uh, and, and the History Channel. The History Channel has a documentary and then of course we can also see that this is all the work of the devil making idols drink milk and things like that but the issue about the supernatural now is actually confirmed by science now it is confirmed and they have no explanation for these three phenomenons which we see so this is a death blow for atheism there's no way uh, their beliefs can be true so now atheism is going down like a clown like christianity is and here, and this is a clear scientific evidence which disproves both belief systems. All right. Well, let's carry on from there. Just having some fun in the live chat. Uh, yeah, this is almost as big as my head. It's fun. All right. <laughs> Don't mind me being the worst person in the live chat. Samir Farsane says, Quran says, uh, Chiab, uh, take, take a bit. 
Tekib, meaning a piercing torch, which exactly describes a burning asteroid piercing the atmosphere. Where did you get stars from, Mark? Sorry if I messed up that. Uh, she had to keep. Yeah, so stars are uh, balls of plasma. Um, they are they are sort of undergoing nucleus uh, 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 fusion, basically, where where he hydrogen is converted into helium. They're not, and and you know, sort of heavier elements are created in this this uh, uh, nuclear fusion process. So they they aren't torches, and meteorites are, are not burning torches. They're they're um, their bodies of usually heavy metals like iron and, and things like that, that, that um, are past remnants of, say, supernovae explosion. So one of these things is scientifically accurate. Burning torch is not scientifically accurate. Now, you might say, hey, it's sort of it's hyperbole. It's, it's a it's a it's a, you know, sort of description of kind of what it is, you know, and, and sort of this. That's fine. That's fine. But it's not scientifically accurate because a scientifically accurate thing would say what it is, not what it's like. Um, do we also get a closing as well? I wouldn't mind just quickly having a closing, like maybe a minute or so. Well, um, we, yeah, I was going to say, before we get to closings, we'll see if we can get through a few more of that, uh, these super chats. Okay, sure. Um, sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, we'll definitely get you guys uh, final thoughts as long as uh, uh, we can get roll through these. Uh, super uh, Squid Super Hunk says you can show agreement between parts of Spider-Man comic books and modern science. Is Spider-Man scientific? If everything that contains some truth is scientific, what is the value in that word? One minute mm -hmm. there. No, you can't. Um, you cannot do what you're what you are claiming you can do. But there are certain cases. I'll, I'll give you a better example. There are some cases where you'll find. Uh, books of the ancients where it could actually agree with modern science true that could happen again we just call the cops cops can explain that it could be a coincidence observed could be a plagiarized could be something which is uh, he was a scientist where the scientific miracle is is that the agreement with science came in triplets okay so we're not talking about an independent verse no book of the past has a triplet three verses oceanography each one of them can be correctly interpreted to agree with modern science so and also the issue about sperm a uh, gender determination that it was a sperm you will find agreement in the quran on that people of the past believed in all kinds of wrong things which i shared with you so this time. i think where the argument is in the triplet which proves it's a miracle all right, moving on. Let's do uh, 30 seconds, guys. We'll really try to get these banged out. Samir Farsain says, Mark, the Riemann hypothesis is still unproven 165 years later, yet scientists still believe it to be true and use it because it makes correct predictions. 30 seconds. The what hypothesis? I didn't quite catch that. The Riemann hypothesis? That's spelled R-I-E-M-A-N-N. -E -N -N. So I'll let you look that up and hypothesis. respond. Well, um, I mean, I, I presume he's talking about the book that I brought up, maybe. Um, yeah, and it, it, it's basically mathematics, which Three mathematics seconds. is is a language. It's not it's not sort of empirical science. It's used in science because it can quantify things, but it is not by itself a science. In science, is empirical, and mathematics is not. It's a language. It's how we describe things in science. So I think you've sort of got a category error there where you're sort of saying, hey, this mathematical equation is by itself science, where it is science is the describing of it. It's not actually mathematics specifically. All right. And uh, let's move on. Uh, sorry to uh, Leo and David. Davids, we're going to carry on to some more pointed questions. Squid Superhunk says, vaguely translated mundane observations are what we are calling, quote unquote, scientific thoughts mm -hmm. 30 seconds so yeah as i was pointing out the the discovery about let's just say internal waves uh this was actually done by a scientific firm and the guy actually won an award for it and if you i did not share with you how he made those discoveries but he basically did a lot it required uh technological instruments for him to discover this all of what I have shared with you about this, about the three miracles, about the about Five the ag uh, agreement with oceans, it's all based upon modern science and scientists discovering it. Time, not vague observations. 
All right. Uh, Robin Webster says, Science is a process. The Quran provides no methodology, is not repeatable or falsifiable. Submit the Quran for peer review. Male slash female is sex, not gender. 30 seconds on the clock. Okay, then don't try to show errors with it. Yeah, I'll say, no, 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 that's not the scientific method. You see, you are just trying to quibble here. You, you are not able to answer the scientific agreement with the Quran, so you're trying to get out on a technicality. Okay, so the issue here, all I'm showing you is that the Quran is in conformity with modern science. That's what I mean by scientific, and it's perfectly fine to use it that way. And I'm also showing that Five there seconds. are no contradictions between the two. All right. Uh, Samir Farsain uh, says to you, Mark, 96% of internal waves are less than 1,000 meters deep. So, yes, the Quran is correct. You can barely see your hand and not see it. Debunk debunking was debunked. 30 seconds, Mark. Yeah, so um, the idea that, that Allah is the one stopping the light, that's not scientifically accurate. So that's actually, you know, completely false. That, that's the whole point that, you know, you're, you're sort of giving this book which says, hey, Allah does this, Allah does that, these demons do this, these demons do that. It's not scientifically accurate. Um, you're sort of taking one thing and saying, hey, you know, it, it doesn't take a genius to swim down, see that it gets darker and darker and that your hand gets harder and harder to see and say, oh, well, down there you can barely see your hand. Time. Big freaking deal. Mm -hmm. All right. And I will apologize to anybody in the live chat as we are running low on time. So if we missed your chat, uh, do apologize uh, if it's not terribly constructive. So uh, let's see. Bitter Truth says, Quran never says clinging clot or blood clot. This is going back to the last question. We're probably going to move on. Sorry, Bitter Truth, yes. just because uh, we already talked about that quite a bit. Um, uh, for Nadir, what does Muhammad say to drink camel urine? I don't know if we should really go down that path right no, now either. Still, no. Well, yeah. Let's just we're moving on. Sorry, guys. We are low on time, so we want to get some something we can actually get our teeth sunk into here. Evidence of God. Nadir, Bible versus a Quran scientific accuracy debate. James contacted you a week ago. Please accept my challenge and prepare to become a Christian. That's from Rick. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, definitely, Rick, if you uh, want to challenge me. I can't find Christians who are willing to debate science, okay? But what you're doing, Rick, you know, I'm first of all, I'm glad that you actually did come forward to do this, but what you're doing, you're filling the void. All the Christian apologists here on, on Modern Day Debate, and not, and not only that, but for the last 30 years, they run away from science debates. Only Islam is the only religion that answers the challenge, and we and we lead that debate and win that debate. Look, you can go whether you Orthodox Jews, Hindus. I've done this for thirty years. Okay, I've done this from the very beginning. So when Mark says, "Well, you know, you're really not a big," man, it doesn't it doesn't matter. I've been here for thirty years, and I can tell you one thing: Christians, Jews, and and and, and Hindus, they do not open up their Bibles or books for scientific criticism only the religion of islam does that all right in islam ia threw throwed mountain on earth to prevent lands from moving i think ia did not know about tectonic plates or he skipped geo class same for biology and the formation of the embryo so i think what's happening here is they're trying to do damage control they're thinking okay if i can show some kind of error with the quran all the scientific evidence is going to go poof but it's not going to work first of all the quran says nothing about what you're talking about and so we could just move on from there all right uh let's see here uh Bitter truth. I defeated you, Nadir. Your claim sperm doesn't form in the testes, and next debate you were unable to provide evidence God created sky without pillar. I'm an atheist, Nadir, and I'm willing to use camera. 30 seconds. Yeah, talk to James. I, I will accept any challenges. Again, uh, you know, we, I am, because there really is nobody else left to debate, all the, even though I, I appreciate you coming forward, but the undeniable fact is that atheists are running away from the commitments they made to debate this topic. Okay. That's an undeniable fact. So Shane the Pain, uh, we'll spend a little time with this one. It says, it's not a scientific fact when you can change the meaning of the verse when you want. That was for $20, so we'll put up to a minute there. Any thoughts? Yeah, no, I never changed the meaning of any verse. 
I never played any kind of interpretation game. It was actually our buddy here uh, who was changing the meaning of verses. He was talking about that the Quran was talking about, you know, shooting stars. He tried to point out that, you know, the Quran talked about determination of gender was taking place in this verse, and it wasn't. He was talking about now making the making it now. Okay, so he misrepresented the Quran over there. And I, look, you are, what's it? I've been sitting here for almost two hours now waiting for anybody to, to show that I'm just misrepresenting the Quran. That I've never happened. That. What's happening here is you are trying to salvage this debate. You're trying to give him ammunition to use against me. What's well, the debate's over. All right. Uh, well, I did say we'd spend a little extra with it because it is $20. Uh, and you invoked Mark several times. So Mark, 30 seconds on the floor. We'll go, uh, we'll move on from this one. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know what what debate like a deal and the deal was a, a, a attending. Um, he clearly changed the the stars to lamps and then back to stars and then said they're meteorite. He's changing it all over the place. Um, you know, you can rewind it, you can watch it again. He said that they were lamps. It's talking about lamps, and then the next time he's talking about, the, he does a lot of this. You know, he said, uh, "Oh well, if it's wrong about waves under the ocean, it could mean barriers is something else." This is this is what he's doing. He's Five just seconds. changing it to meet his needs at the time. That's all. All right. Flanker420 says, Nadir, if any of the scientific facts were the opposite case, couldn't you decipher the text to fit either way? Seems very much like a Rorschach test. I don't know what a Rorschach test is. It's the uh, it's the ink blots that you see. You know, that you see the ink blots and you get your first impression. You know, it's a butterfly or something like that. Rorschach. Test. I'll have to look it up. Uh, look, again, this is another attempt to salvage the debate they're trying to uh somehow try to claim that i'm doing some interpretation game that just didn't happen i've been sitting here for two hours waiting for these type of refutation that just didn't happen the debate is over okay now there's clear evidence like for example barriers in the sea that's not an interpretation game internal ways no light there no sense. interpretation game is playing here in fact it's you guys who are doing that not us it's time. Perfect. All right. The nun says, we'll just ask the first part. The second part, we've already hammered that one just to death, guys. So, Nadir, why is the Quran so dependent on the Bible? It is not dependent on the Bible. It is correcting the Bible, as Mark would and other atheists are even have conceded. And it's so obvious, it's undeniable. One of the miracles of Muhammad is that he was able to know what those scientific errors in the Bible was, and he presented corrections towards it. Now, you can watch that all in my last debate, which I did. I, email me, I'll give it to you. And that's one of the many miracles of the Holy Quran. And that was a great way of showing that Jesus cannot be God due to all the scientific errors in the book. But the undeniable fact, which was what we have seen for the last 30 years, Christians don't debate this. Christians run away from this topic. That's time. Okay? Muslims are here. Now you need to answer that. All right. Let's move on from there. And, uh, yeah, no, the, the camel urine comment was not on topic. I'm sorry. Uh, if you if you don't like it, you can uh, email moderndaydebate at gmail.com. Uh, that's yeah, James there. So uh, let's carry on there, guys. Uh, do 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 do. Robin Webster. None of the miracles you mentioned are confirmed. So this is the second last one. So uh, that's just a, a a claim. Did you want to say anything about that? Thirty seconds or just he's in denial. He's in denial. I've presented unlike uh, Brad. I'm sorry. Um, uh, uh, I forget your name. Uh, unlike my opponent here, I showed the exact scientific journal. You hit pause on your YouTube page. And then I showed the verse of the Quran, and I showed the agreement between the two. So I have already presented my references. I came tonight to debate armed to the teeth with, with authentic and verifiable scientific journals. Okay? So their claim is just not true. You are in denial over what took place tonight, and it's about you now accepting reality. All right. Yeah, well, just just on the camel thing, it's actually in the hadiths, not the Quran, and the debate is about the Quran. So there's there's that as well. Oh, wow. Yeah, let's try. Like I said, we we did really well to keep this one out of the mud. I think everybody, and uh, it's uh, this has been really productive. I think so. Last super chat, and then we will give a minute to each speaker to close out. Another perspective asks, "What will your imam do against West peace and safety?" So I think they're asking like what maybe policies you would implement if you were in the West. I 
not sure how to interpret that, but maybe that's a good way to go about this last one. 30 seconds. Uh, policies? I'm, I'm a little bit confused as far as what he's asking. Well, I'm not sure. It says, what will your um, mom do against West? I think there, it's kind of, it's, Did it's, you say imam? Yeah, I think it's kind of a baked question, but... Um, it, it almost sounds like video? Islamophobia or some yeah. kind of... Like somehow we're against the West or something, and yeah, now it's a little bit uh, of a baked question there. So I'm yeah. sorry. I think that's uh, that's probably going to be where we'll wrap up because, like I said, every, you know, Nadir's in a bit of a hurry, and we did have a really long uh, back and forth there. So big round of virtual applause to both of our speakers, and uh, I'll close it out like I usually do. Do uh, I get a closing? Your... Yes, of course. I was going to say I always do it uh, yeah. the uh, EU style. So, uh, uh, Mark, first minute on the clock, yours. Okay, so um, again, I'm going to go back to my introduction where Sean Rafferty um, basically said, and I'll repeat this thing because you want to see how much this fits with what we've seen today. Even for those subfields where there is a significant element of interpretation, those interpretations are still based on and constrained by physical evidence and interpretations are always provisional, pending possible refutation by contradictory evidence. Pseudoscience by comparison is scornful of evidence. The pseudoscience just re reaches a preferred conclusion in advance, then selects evidence often removed from any relevant context to lend supposed support for their conclusions. Often the preconceived conclusion is the one that justifies some health closely held identity or ideology. Contradictory evidence is waved away or ignored, or as a last resort, one can always claim conspiracy to keep pseudoscientific ideas suppressed, i.e. atheist science, wacky dacky, whatever he says. I'm so sorry. beautiful. That's, that's all I want to say. All right, we'll end that there. And I will uh, just pull this out. Uh, Sunflower did put in for $10, and I'm sorry that I missed that there. I was looking for specific uh, Super Chats. He says, excuse me, I encourage everyone to read the NIH paper I cited about wine. It was first published in the last three months and cites 153 other people, papers. It is titled Moderate Wine Consumption and a Health and Narrative Review. Uh, so sorry that I missed that there. So let's uh, give the floor to Nadir. One minute for your closing thoughts there. Yeah, I have, a, if you, I have already quoted a paper which acknowledges that there's some good in that, but the harm outweighs any good, okay? And also your big mistake here is this is as far as drinking wine for some, wine for some benefit, that's only so long, that's in today's time. Nobody's going to recommend this evil like before we knew about fetal alcohol syndrome. Nobody is going to sacrifice children's brain damage when you give it to pregnant women uh, because, oh, you know, it's a little bit good for your heart. No one is going to give this wine to five-year-old kids to drink. No, because the, the harm of it outweighs the benefit. So your point for sure is totally debunked before the science of it was even known because then you're going to be giving it to women and children. So the problem is this guy doesn't understand science. He doesn't understand that Muhammad gave a scientifically superior, and he doesn't. He understands, but he doesn't want to accept it that Muhammad gave a scientifically superior answer on the issue of alcohol, not drinking it, leading to Muslim women fifty times less likely to give birth to a fetal alcohol child. That's what the studies demonstrate. That good of it outweighs any good. Uh, Five seconds. Uh, I mean, the harm of it outweighs any benefits of which uh, of alcohol. And just email me; I'll send you the journal on that. Just to confirm with you there, uh, Nadir, um, this is your one minute closing on the uh, the debate itself. Uh, I don't know if you oh. were. Yeah, I was going to say I if you. Think... Yeah, it sounded like you, you were answering that question. Time. So, did you want a, a, a minute to close your thoughts oh, there? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me get let me get a minute here. Sure thing. You, you know, it, as I was on my phone, and maybe you've got the notification too here. I literally, in the middle of the debate, received a notification of one of these people, I won't mention their name, who has a big YouTube channel debating some anonymous weirdo on Islam, science, all these things. This is my point. They are running away because they know they cannot beat the case. They saw the terrible debate defeats they suffered in the past, and they're doing... And, and, and so that's one of the miracles of the Quran. I think what was funny tonight was Mark trying to show articles in scientific journals contradicting the text of the Quran. He fumbled, tried to misquote the Quran. We had a lot of fun on that, I think. But the scientific evidence is clear. I'm just repeating myself here. The, the scientific miracle is in the triplet. If it was just an ind individual verse, 
on seas. Yeah, maybe anybody could get that right. It could you could call the cops on it, but the scientific miracle is in the triplet, Five and seconds. there's no scientific errors pertaining to seas proving this is a miracle because this cannot be done by research or observation because those things come with That's trial tough. and error. There's no trial and error in the Quran. All right. Uh, looks like Nadir's wrapped it up there, so uh, that's time. So, uh, yeah, if you haven't already uh, done so, hit the like button. Share this out in those spaces you like having these discussions, uh, you know, and keep the debate rolling. Uh, you know, we like seeing everybody in the live chat hanging out and uh, uh, putting in your two cents. So, uh, yeah, 60 seconds is very short. Yeah, it can be a little short there, so I do see you. We're going to close out, everybody. So, uh, once again, big round of virtual applause to uh, Mark and the Deer. Uh, thank you guys for being here at Modern Day Debate. We super appreciate our speakers, and, of course, we super appreciate you guys in the live chat. So, uh, until next time, cheers. Thank you. Thank you.